Hey, hey, welcome everybody to Saturday afternoon, and I figured I'd do a hangout. We had a live stream last night, uh, me, Tripod, and Sam all had a live stream, it was like three hours long, we're building our droids, it was really cool, and I figured, well, I'm going to go live today or tomorrow on a hangout, so, well, why not do it today? So, here I am. Anyway, I'm uh, live on YouTube, I shared them over on Twitter, my Facebook page, my Facebook group. If anybody would like to drop in, I have a link right there, you're welcome to drop in. Altered Proxy, hello, how you doing? Let me see who else we got here. Yeah, I got a delay. I'll show it on the screen here, but I got a delay between YouTube and uh, StreamYard. But yeah, what's going on, everybody? Um, my, my little droid here, my little baby R2, I got it painted white. I primed it gray, took some pictures, painted it white, many coats. It got real windy outside. I need to put some more white coats on it but I don't want the wind to blow the little droid away and break it. So I don't want to pull a Tim and have it go crashing off the table. And I'm going, ah, but anyway, yeah, it's really cool. I really like that. I got many more to, to, uh, print. So Victor, hello, Victor. How you doing? If anybody would like to drop in and hang out and tell us what you're working on your hobby projects, I got a link there. You can uh, do that. So, Anyway, got a few other people will be popping in here. I stream anywhere from two to four hours, once or twice a week on my live stream. So it's Saturday. We'll see how it goes. Um, if we have a lot of people drop in, a lot of cool content, we'll run it up to four hours. Betty Boop 45. Hello. How you doing, Betty Boop? So anyway, I got my monster energy drink. Yeah, something weird about these monsters. You pop the tab open, you drink from this side, but the label, I guess, the machine randomly puts it out. That's closer. It was completely backwards. So when you're drinking, you're not really advertising for them. It's over here on the side. So anyway, I got my vape pipe. I got that. I got a really cool a little bench here. Here, I've got a new-to-me CR10 Max. It's not brand new, but it's new to me. And I got the VL Touch put back on it, and I got it working. And when I was on my live stream last night, let me switch my cameras here. When I was on my live stream last night, it's a convertible. I had a stringing mess on top because it kind of let loose on the stock Creality bed. So then I restarted the print after my stream, and I put down some nanopolymer. Well, that hangs on for dear life. And here's the next Brent Benchy. Came out beautiful. It's got a real minor line in the middle. It's like a little step up on both sides. It's not a shift. I'm not really sure what caused that. But it's printed solid uh, PLA. Jesse PLA, I forget which color, but it's beautiful. Came out completely beautiful. Yeah, perfect print. So, anyway, thought I'd like to share that. The real Sam Prentice. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Got my pride shirt on. Yeah, Pink Floyd all the way. Anyway. Uh, yeah, um, the Benchy came out good. I got my little droid here, primed white. I got it primed it gray, painted it white. Need to put another coat or two on it, but it got real windy outside, and I don't want to pull a Dewitt Tim and uh, get it ran off the counter. And here we got a guest popping in now. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Good. I joined oh, the uh, Troid Club. What's that? I joined the Troid Club. Oh, cool. All right. You're on the Patreon. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I upped my membership this morning. I was on at a dollar tier, so I kicked it up to five dollars. So I guess to get all these cool little projects, I need to be on the five dollar tier. So I've got, I got that kicked up this morning. Yeah, I, I'm on the eight, ten pound one or the the nine pound one. I think it is eight pound fifty. It is the second one from the left would be the five dollar one. I'm not sure what that is in pounds. I'm, I'm one old. after that. Okay. So All right. One tier higher. I went. Hello, Carl. How you doing? Yeah, and uh, last night during my live stream, when another uh, Michael dropped in and showed his really cool Wally, 
I knew before it happened that when he played that song, if it went over 10 seconds, I was going to get demonetized. I'm not, but nah, maybe it'll be okay. He works for Disney, works for LucasArts. Maybe it'll be fine. But no, uh, the algorithm of YouTube automatically flagged me. So I had the option to dispute it, but there's no option corresponding where I could dispute it. So about four hours, five hours ago, I clicked to take out that section of the audio and it was still processing and never finished like the program hung up. So I stopped it and I went to restart it and I won't reload. So at some point I've got to clip out that audio and I do have it downloaded. I don't want to re-upload it because I, I'll lose all my views and everything that I've already had on the video. So I'll see if I can get the program later to uh, delete the audio for that one section where it's playing the music. So, oh, well, live and learn. Oh, no biggie. To you. Hello, Marcel. How you doing? Hey, Marcel. Yeah, I'm going to have to move this little droid sitting here. The fresh paint's kind of getting to me. So, anyway, I can't leave it outside. It's too windy. But I usually, whenever I use any kind of spray paint outside, I if it's nice out, I'll let it dry out there. Otherwise, i got to bring it in. And then the odor, you can kind of smell it. So. Yeah, it does get to you. Uh, link for the droid group. Let's see. Let me go grab it. Patreon, Mr. Bagley is... Patreon. Oh, where's it at? Here it is. I'm looking around my ring light that I'm not using. That's why I'm ducking my head down. I don't have the ring light turned on, but um, yeah, here's a link to Mr. Bagley's Patreon. And if James is watching, it's Mr. Bedelli. But no, it's, it's Mr. Bagley. Something like that. I don't have many T, so I mispronounce a lot of words. Oh, same with me. But there's a link right there to the Patreon, Mr. Bagley. If anybody would like to join and uh, follow us on our build progress, build along with us, come on a live stream, show your progress, very welcome to do so. Uh, Jerry's in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where he is. I've lived here for, uh, I'll be 57 in June, so I've been here since I've been five years old. So I've been here a long time. Moved here from Nebraska. Cold up there. Yeah, Marshall, I didn't even think about it. Uh, I've never dropped it on the droid group before. Uh, I didn't even, you know. I, I did today. I, okay, no, I didn't. Yeah, I kind of, I remember uh, Sam mentioned it and I kind of forgot about it. And then I got busy trying to get my stream deck working with OBS. So when I hit a bunch button, I can change my video. I got that working. But when I get a super chat, I can play sounds here. The sound is coming out my speakers, like for instance. Can you hear that? Don't think you heard that, did you? I mean, it was really low. It's playing through my desktop speakers, but when I hit a button on the stream deck, it's not playing through StreamYard or OBS, so nobody else can hear it. So I made a, I talked to uh, Liam about it. We chatted for a little bit offline, trying to help me fix it, Astro Printer. And I made a post on Facebook and on Twitter. If anybody knows what my problem is, I'm not sure how to set that up. I can't find the right video on it. Liam did send me a video that I haven't watched yet. But when I hit a button on the stream deck, I want it to play so everybody out there can hear it. So I just need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I'm sure it's something simple, but anyway, you get old, you get forgetful sometimes. At least I do. Too many dead brain cells. <laughs> but hey, you've been posting some really cool stuff lately you've been working on. Yeah, thank you. Um, lots of lissophanes, of course. <laughs> Let me uh, uh, grab him on Facebook. Yeah, here, one second. If I go, Jerry, my battery is right now almost dead, so I'm right now char charging it up. All right, here's a Facebook group for Mr. Bagley over on Facebook, everybody. If you'd like to join. Anyway, um, you're charging up your battery for what? For my iPad. Uh, I mean, I was four hours in the chat room in there with the droid builders and that seemed to be a really nice bunch and funny and well somebody even undressed there. 
You should have seen that. I'm not sure altered proxy, but I'll write that down and then I'll check it. I'm not sure what we added it to earlier, but I was trying, I couldn't get it to work right. Find something right on. And throw that one away. It don't work. Betty says I'm kind of dark. Okay, I'll increase that in a second. Um, I think you look okay. Yeah, usually when I'm live streaming and I go rewatch it, I'm really bright and I don't like being so bright. So right now I got an overhead light on me, which it's got cardboard around it. It's got it's beaming on me. I don't have the ring light on in front of me. Yeah, I'm a little bit dark at times sometimes. So that's why I have to switch all of my lights on except the big one behind me. That's also list of saying what I made. I made a new lamp list of fame. Didn't came out as I expected. Uh, it's a little bit crappy, I think. <laughs> Sorry, my language, but that's, that's fine. how I feel. You're you're allowed to cuss within reason. Just don't do any hardcore sexual no, comments. No, 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 no. And we don't do politics or religion. I know. I don't like politics. <laughs> Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, uh, my taste, it's uh, its not good enough. I can do better than that. Hey, David, how you doing? Oh. Mr. Petzl. Oh, come in. Join us. He's in his room working on his printers, or he's in his garage working on his reloaders, or he's at the restaurant doing chores. One of the three. And I don't know if he's under snow or not in Iowa. You know, most of the country's pretty screwed up. I'm pretty much snow-free here. I think oh, we have 10 degrees plus where I am. Let me post that link again. Yeah, it was nice out here this morning. Now it got windy, but it's been pretty nice out. They said next week it's going to be in there around 70-ish. I'm not sure for how many days or how long or what. But here's the screen link. Maybe you'd like to drop in and talk about what you're working on, your projects, hobbies, painting, 3D printing, laser, resin printing. Snow, snow, and more snow. Wow. I remember years ago it snowed here. Like every 20 years it snows in Vegas where I live at, not very often. And I don't know, like 10 years ago, my neighbor crossed the street, which is from Michigan, it snowed. So I made a snowball, I ran over, I banged on her door, showed up, did a backed up, blasted her with a snowball, and I got cussed out. She's like, I'm from Michigan. Ah, and slammed the door on me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. That's the kind of sense of humor I got. It's like you see these newscasters. If I ever seen a newscaster doing a live newscast, oh, no, you, we left. I would grab a snowball and I'd throw it at the newscaster. I wouldn't hit the person in the face, obviously, but it'd be kind of funny to see him live on camera get hit by a snowball. Yeah, I don't know where he went. Matt disappeared. So, well, someone else have to drop in to keep me company now. Where are you, where are you at, Victor? Heat and more heat. Anyway... Yeah, a little droid came out really good. So, like I say, once that paint cure is on, I can, I'll can i put another coat or two on it. Uh, the type of weathering stuff that you were talking about, uh, Sam, for weathering the droid, they don't sell that in America anywhere. But I do have some rust wash, and I have some other types of things that I can put on it, different types of washes. So I give it kind of a dirty effect when I get it done. I just got to figure out how I'm going to paint it. Or what colors I'm going to paint. I'll, I'll, be, I'll probably do the top different, mainly the bottom white, and then I'll use my uh, acrylic paint pens to do all, all the tiny detail. Obviously, that's really hard to do with a brush, as I know it's a pain, but these paint pens might be the cure all for that kind of thing. Oh, in Florida, okay. Pompano Beach. Yeah, my uh, wife, her family lives in uh, uh, 
Pensacola. And she'll be flying down there around June 8th or something. She'll be gone for hopefully two months, maybe longer. So longer the better, right? <laughs> the less food I have to deliver to the bedroom. Anyway. Yeah, I don't got much going on. I just got these benches I printed out. I got some painting work I'm doing on. I'm working on. Let's see here. Let me switch the camera. I'll show you here. Here's a mask I have to paint. It's resin printed. Came out really good in resin. I've got a few coats of paint on it real lightly. And this is... Uh, um, let me think. Who is it? Black Panther versus Killmonger from Wicked over on their Patreon. Let me get this over here. And I still got a lot more work to do on it. And I did one dumb mistake when I glued this together. I was filming a video on this, but it's not out yet. Right along here where my thumb is is where it was glued together. And I didn't push that arm into his chest far enough. So there's an indentation in his chest where his fingers and the sword goes. And like dummy me, went and super glued it together in the wrong place and painted it. And even if I could heat up that arm, which I don't think I could to bend it in where it goes, I'd probably destroy the paint on it. But yeah, it came out pretty good. And then here's his head. You can just take the head off and switch him around. Yeah, here's his head right here that I'm working on. It's not done yet. But it's come out pretty good. We got a few more people popping in. Let me go grab them here. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Hello, Astro Printer. Liam. Hey, guys. How are you? How are you guys? How you doing? Good. 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 Sorry, I got busy with Fusion 360. <laughs> here, I'll just take him off his base here and hold him up. That's a, that's a nice image. So, Very nice. yeah, I still got a lot more painting to do on it, but then I can just interchange the heads. You know, if a child was watching that, they get scared because you're putting someone's head off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I asked a friend of mine, I said, what'd be the best way for me to apply? Um, let's see, who was it I spoke to? Uh, um, help me, Brandy. I can't think of his name. I forget people's names all the time. Walter, my friend Walter here in, in town. What'd be the best way to apply... Uh, the paint on this, he said, use a popsicle stick. So, hmm. popsicle stick it was, and it worked pretty good. Because if I put on my finger and I wipe it on, then it's, it's going to my finger soft to get down on. It'll get down in places I don't want to get. So, popsicle stick worked pretty good. So what do you got? Stuff. What do you got going on, Dave? Uh, we had weather that was above twenty degrees today, so it was like a warm spell. So I wow. went out and uh, shoveled some snow, and um, we're at 20 degrees now, and I'm just, uh, this is just warm as all get up. It's So isn't I'm doing weird? little or nothing. Isn't it weird when we think 20 degrees is warm? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shane, how you doing? Let's see. Hello, Chris Travis. Anybody like to drop in and talk about what you're doing or show off? I got the screen link right there. You're welcome to click in. So what what I'm doing right now is I've gotten my image of remember the, I post on your on your on your fan group the thing for for Mars. This one. Oh yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, can, that came out nice. Yeah, but I'm going to do a new one now. This hasn't even been sanded or anything. Just a piece of test wood. Was, was, that on on right was, was that down the K40 or other one? No, this was a, this is CNC. Oh, okay. Wood router. Yeah, that's actually engraved into the surface. Okay. So what I'm going to do when what I'm going to try right now is I got an, um, a 3D image of Mars, and I've actually cropped it and sliced it so I only have one face and then shrunk the Z down so it's only four millimeters high, and I'm going to test again on the, on the other half of this a CNC in. An image of Mars in the center, and if that works out well and it comes out okay, when I just do that, then I'll do I'll get all of the logos of all of the landers that ever successfully landed on Mars from NASA. Wow! And then I'll put the logo of Mars in the center, and then I'll put and then I'll CNC out, out all the way around and the names of each of the landers 
all the way and the year all the way around the outside of it. That would be nice. So, and then I like to make that as a, a as a proper plaque. I'll put you it know, up on the wall. You know, that can be, you can make that a video as you're working with it. Just take different clips of you working with your machine and then compile it and see if it make a video out of it. Yeah, yeah, I probably will. Um, as I said, I'm just testing to see if it works. And if it, if it, if I do get it working, then I'll go about the process of how, how I created it. Because yeah, nowadays, but, not everything, but nowadays, a lot of things, I'll get something in the mail. It's like, hey, I can make a video about it. Or, hey, that's cool. I can film that. Or, you know, you well, never know. Time is my enemy. I don't yeah. have any. <laughs> well, I'm retired, man, and I, I don't have any time at all. I mean, the day flies uh, by constantly. Here he uh, is. I have some buddies of mine who are retired, and they spend more time doing stuff for themselves and for other people and they, they have less free time than they did when they have a full-time job. Yeah. You've been crying, Matt? No, no sweating. My room sweating. right now is... I don't know yeah, if I want 20, to know. 25 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> oh, now whose mind's in the gutter? It ain't mine. I oh, know. For my mind to be in the gutter, I need to go up a few levels. <laughs> <laughs> How was how are you, are you uh, Liam and Dave? Um, so how did I? Did all you guys watch our live stream last night? It was like three hours. Yeah, the draw. Yeah, I watched it. I I'm didn't... sure. I'm sure Sam was pulling his hair out because we took so darn long to get everything put together. I should have pre-assembled one leg, and then I kept asking how to do things. I was getting guidance from Sam, and I had the paperwork right in front of me. And then D. Witt was telling me how to program my receiver. The paperwork's right in front of me. I don't have to keep asking him what's this and what's that. All we got to do is read it. But we eventually got it done. So. That's RTFM, isn't it, Jerry? What? RTFM. What's read RTFM? The, read the freaking manual. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it was a lot yeah. of fun. It was a lot of fun. I uh, he, he got in trouble with his wife, Sam, did. No, I don't know. So he's in chat. That's, that's what he, he said in the other chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he's watching in chat. I don't know hey, if he'll pop it or not. Them? So, anyway, yeah, it was a long, it was very long. So, yeah. So, it was cool. So, I'm still playing around with this. Um, if I, I need to bring it in. Uh, now I have the STL in the right orientation and stuff. I need to bring it into Fusion again. Because um, I messed up a little bit, so I fixed that, and I'm bringing it to Fusion, and I'm going to um, create my tool pass in Fusion, and then give it a, give it a test on on the same piece of wood. It won't be as deep as this, but well, it may be because I want to get the, the dome of the of the planet, you know. So, oh, did I try I adding? Did we try adding that to a scene with my stream deck? Because in chat, somebody said, "I think you have to add that to a scene." Add what to a scene? My audio somehow. My audio output. You have to have it in the scene to play it as part of a scene. You had it in the scene at the time. Hey Liam, mm -hmm. have you had a have you had a chance to play around with the new uh, Google plugin for Chrome for CNC? No, I didn't know about that one. Yeah, Google has a brand new plugin. It's a G code CNC. Uh, and it's a it's it's just a uh, plugin. Is it a visualizer? Is all it is? No, it's it sends the actual code. So you can actually control your your print your it's CNC, CNC machine. machine. Yeah. Ooh, maybe I'll play with that one because um. It's just an extension. Because I'm playing with um, I'm using a couple of different apps. I'm using I'm playing with V Carve and I'm playing with Easel and um different ones, but um. Like if, if it's a good one out there that would actually do good CNC control via uh, um, the web browser. See, I like the web browser; it's good and bad. But the the CNC machine I have, I can put the I can put my G code on an SD card, stick it into a handset, and hit go and walk away from it. And no computers needed to be plugged in. It will read the raw G and G code. But I might try it out. If I, I'll go look that up. Actually, let me make a note of that. David Petzl, there's people in chat that have only been here for the last few streams. They're fairly new. Uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm an old man. <laughs> and, I do, and I do whatever I want. <laughs> Actually, uh, 
I uh, I have a restaurant, so I'm I used to be independently wealthy, but now since the restaurant is uh, doing so poorly, uh, I'm having to do other things. But uh, I designed the uh, Pets Fang, which is a uh, which is an engineered cooling solution for Creality, TiVo, Prusa, G Tech. Uh, it I've designed it for a lot of different platforms. And actually, that's what I'm working on right now. I just got files from uh, Micro Swiss. They sent me some files. So I'm doing uh, doing some designs for uh, Pets Fang on a uh, the new, well, it's not new, but they're uh, direct drive backplate. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So I've got some files for that. And I actually found a way of mounting a, uh, the, the micro Swiss backplate really is kind of limited in the, in what you can attach to it. But, uh, I figured out a way of putting a, uh, slice mosquito on it. So that's going to be kind of cool. Um, to be able to put that, uh, backplate on. Maybe I'll see if I can get you the, um, uh, the the artist D cooling system um, design the head design it's an encased design but because um, it's got a it's got a, a daughter board in there but um, maybe there's um, something you could build around that for better cooling on the on the artist D there uh, yeah there there are a couple of the Creality the new Creality machines that have daughter boards right on the back plate that uh, yeah it's know, best. It's probably best if you have the printer there in front of you so you can test fit and trial and error instead of everything on a screen, right? Uh, not really, because uh, if if I've got if I've got the CAD files from the company, um, I don't have to. I I know about the placement. You know, I know how the duct works, um, so I really don't have to have much of anything. Um, I don't typically change the duct that much. Uh, it's mostly so, the mounting of it. Yeah, it's just the mounting of it. Um, so some of, I mean, some of the newer ducks that I've done, the the evolve is is uh, quite a bit different than anything, and that's the one I'm using. Um, but but the the RSD is their direct drive, but they're an IDEX machine, so they don't have a lot of space outside of what's in that box. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it challenging, you know. Yeah, and there, you know, there's always the, there's always a space that you don't think of. The don't the, do that, Matt. It's contagious. You know, the right, the space oh, no. right and left. Yeah, you know, there's always clearance problems. There's clearance problems in Z in the Z rail at the top, and yeah, it's it's challenging, but it's fun. Hello, Travis. So Liam, your turn. For what? To yawn? No, I'm Who's not. Who's Liam? Sure Who's Astro Printer? Who's Liam? Who are you? Who am I? Um, who is Liam? I'm uh, I'm an IT engineer who is a serious science nerd, as you can probably guess. Um, and I'm into. I got into 3D printing from astronomy because I wanted to make custom parts for my telescopes, which I do. Um, I like using this one because I keep it around. It's a mount for my Raspberry Pi to control my telescope. Goes right onto the one of the wedges on my telescope. Um, and then I and I also design tactile interfaces for the um, again as part time. I design tactile interfaces for the blind like these, so the blind can can explore the constellations with their hands. Um, so I do a lot of stuff like that because I, I, I'm big into astronomy and, and, and science and stuff. And uh, I have one of these weird streams where we start talking about 3D printing and then we branch off into physics and astrophysics and planetary sciences and then find our way all the way back again, back to 3D printing. So, yeah, there's never one topic. We, we always go off in tangents, which makes it fun. So Astro Printer is a channel if you want to look it up. Could you possibly do a walk out in your garage with an iPad or a cell phone and show us your telescopes, or is that not convenient? Right um, now? It's bitter cold outside, and the, the garage is full. So let me 
How about we do it right in the, in the spring? I can do it with my tablet and I can bring them outside and show them. Cool. Yeah, yeah I cool. Definitely even on your channel, it'd be cool to see all your yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, well, I have, I posted pictures. Um, let me find them here. I have pictures. I, I'm, let me dig them out of my phone. I can show them on screen. You posted screen. a picture. <laughs> yeah, I have different ones for different things, you know, so this one, I think I have some, I'm sure I have some on my phone somewhere. Hey, Matt, what do you do? What do you all, where do you live at? What do you like to do? Well, I live in England, UK, and I do lithophanes mainly, only for charity and uh, yeah trying to work with many charities together like uh, mental health um, then I try to do some animal rescue um, I work with the Mir Foundation in America together uh, I produce pictures for them and they sell them on their auction site and that's how they make their money for the charity and that's how the way I support them and here's a sound. Hold on. Sorry about that. Audio camera. Oh, oh. oh I can't do it on the back. It was here too. Now you can do one direction, the camera, my camera. I don't know if you guys can see, see that. The of the board might be. One second, Luis. I'll this answer picture. That That looks lovely. Very nice. Yeah. Butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, I have some colored ones already ready. I don't know if you see them properly. So. Very cool. Yeah. And that's basically what I sent to the charities and just sell them off. And. If you want to support me or want to join my group, Tactile 3D Picture, look it up on Facebook and I accept you. And You're uh, welcome to post it in private chat and I'll put it on the screen if you like. We'll yeah, just put the I link in private that. chat. Um, yeah, okay, Lewis. Right now question. I'm on my phone, so. You have two original CR10s with dual Zs. Guess what? I have two original CR10s with dual Zs. And one of them with the board kept going out about every year or so, the stepper would die on it. I replaced it. At another point, it happened again. So I went to TH3D Studios here in the United States, and I bought one of their 32-bit boards and put in one of them. Actually, I bought two of their boards, put them in both. But my thermistor, for some unknown reason, shorted and killed the chip on the board from TH3D. They repaired it, sent it back to me. Bam, it happened instantly again. Why, I don't know. So I replaced the thermistor all the way down to the control box, resoldered the connections completely. Then I put a SKR 1.3 from Big Tree Tech in the one CR10. Another one has a board from TH3D in it, and that's what I did. And I do have dual Zs on both of them. And if anybody has an Ender 3 out there, they want to put a dual Z on it. The gantry is so short, there's no reason to ever, unless you put a uh, uh, direct drive or something on the X. That way it makes it heavy and it might sag. But other than that, the distance is so short. But on a CR10 or anything big like that, yes, you definitely need dual Zs. It helps it out and it supports that. So I hope that, yeah, that helps you. Oh, wow. That's Here. one of them. That's wow. a visual telescope. So you, that's one that you own? Yeah, that, I have that it's in my garage. The eyepiece is up here. So it's eight feet off the ground. You, the ladder you can see to the side. Over here, that's the ladder I use to actually look through the eyepiece. Wow. Um, there's uh, there's another one I use for imaging. I'm going to dig it out in a second. Just, just let me look here. Yeah, the easy board. That's the only one they currently have. It's the easy I, think, board. Yeah. I, I think the yeah the T three D boards are really good. Yeah. And Tim stands by it, so you get support yeah. when issues. Yeah, the board that was in it was a Creality board. It had died. I replaced I, I replaced the thermistor. I thought it was fine. I put the other board in, hooked it up. Instantly, I was having a thermal runaway or an error. And when I looked at the board, the CPU really close to the glass. <laughs> I could see a tiny little microscopic pinhole that I had killed it. So mm -hmm. anyway, he had repaired it for me, and then uh, I replaced it and had the same problem again. So I put a big pre-tech in one of them. Very That's nice. 
So the telescope on that can be changed to different types of telescopes. It keeps going quiet. And, but the mount is the most important part. And that's I just the one I use for doing astrophotography. And I can switch different telescopes on top of it. They vary. I used to have a real cheap telescope years ago that was a reflect, reflector, whatever. Reflector, yeah. It was like that. It was a red tube. You looked in the slide down here, and then it beamed it on a mirror, and you looked out or something. I don't remember how it worked. but Oh, it was a reflector then. If you look in at the upper part of it, it's a reflector. If you look in the back of it, it's either, it's a refractor. It was coming in from the side. It was a big brown tube. And I was, yeah. I, it was years ago. It was a reflector then. It's like the big one I just showed you a moment ago. It's just a smaller version of it. They're the same design. Maker Viking, hello. How you doing? If you'd like to drop in, Thomas, you're welcome to, but I'm sure you won't. But if you want to, here's the link. Thomas is busy. He don't he don't drop in streams much. He's always busy. <laughs> busy watching streams. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> busy on our streams, yeah. <laughs> wow. Lewis, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And, and the other reason why it's good to show to go with TS3D, even though he's got really good products, it's good to show to show some uh, the love to some of the, the local businesses, you know? Here's the small business. Here's the only way you guys can hear my sound. Let me push that again. See, here's what you're supposed to hear. Super chat! <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of bullshit, but I've got it. I used to have to get it to incorporate it, so I found some music I liked, and then I taped the super part chat, and then I hit two buttons, and it plays. Very cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway. You're going to make Joel jealous now with that super, with that, with that intro. Yeah. <laughs> Gangnam style. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got, like I say, I got this. What's the button? Which button is this one? No, no, you can't hear that. Well, actually, let me we show can, you. The, you can just about hear it. Yeah, Here's you can hear the wah wah. Here's, I know. Wah, 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 wah. Here's my button here. <laughs> Truck horn. <laughs> Super chat. Anyway, something I'm working on. Oh, they're going, to, they're going to build a Voron. Nice. Voron is a nice machine. I haven't seen Chris on in a while. I mean, when um, when I surf YouTube when I'm from my big TV set in the living room, you look too much at one item, and then it's like the other stuff don't pop up on the recommended line or the recently posted. But I haven't seen Chris on in a while. Yeah, here's a link right here to Matt's uh, page if you'd like to join. So, but yeah, it's um, so that, that's what I'm. I know Sam Prentice is having a big giveaway tomorrow because he got over a thousand subs, which is really cool, and I'm glad he got there. And he's giving away, he's giving away a uh, printer. Yeah, uh, it's by Elegu, and I guess it's a resin printer. Maybe it's a 3D at FDM. I'm not sure, but something. So yeah, it looks like an FDM, but I didn't even, I didn't realize. Yeah, it's, they it's made FDM. FDM. I didn't know that they made one either, but that's what I thought. I think it is. It is an FDM, yeah. And I didn't know they made FDMs either until I saw until I saw um, the box that it came in. I've got around 2150 subs, something like that. When I get to 2500, I'm doing a big giveaway. I've got a lot of different companies and people involved in it, so I just have to get my numbers up. And as I'm slowly growing, so it'll probably be a month or so off. Hello, Gary T. How you doing? Hello, SPC, SPC 3D. Hey, guys. To help you get these numbers up so you can get the giveaway, like and subscribe to the channel, guys. Yeah, like, subscribe, share the stream, share my channel. When I get to around 2,400, I'll do a video on it, talking about the companies and then what I'm giving away. And then I'll schedule a stream when I get closer to 2,500. Have away lots of goodies. Yep. Share it to everybody who listen, then share it twice to those that won't. <laughs> and the only thing I'm getting out of the giveaway stream is I'm getting people to like and subscribe. Yep. All the products will be uh, sent directly from the different companies. Uh, a lot of them will be U.S. Some of them will be worldwide, depending on the company. Oh, what am I doing here? I still got you there big. It's okay. Yeah, I'm, just, 
importing stuff into into fusion. Sometimes I'm dense and I forget. Join the club. <laughs> you remind me on my streams. You remind me every now and again. That people are full streams, so. Yeah, when I do this, sometimes and you're on. You, I do this. When I do that, I'm 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 saying make them big. Because sometimes somebody's trying to show something and you're not, you're watching, you're not thinking about it. So I go like that and I want you to make them big when I throw my hands out. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've learned um, Jerry sign language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Greg. Yeah, we're going to keep them coming. Uh, next Friday, we're going to be doing some painting and uh, showing off what we're doing. And then with Sam, we'll talk about what we're doing next. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So. And we're either going to jump around from three different channels or more, or we're all going to multi-stream, and i got to figure out how we're doing this, where we'll all be on each of our channels all connected together at the same time, something like that. We'll get it figured out. And that'll be next Friday at 4 p.m. It's not, it's not, we don't have it scheduled yet. Anybody in chat has any questions, please ask. Uh, please give me a thumbs up on the video if you like uh, us just sitting here babbling about whatever. And if you'd like to drop in and show us what you're working on or show us, you know, what you need help with, you're very welcome. 3D Print Newbie, wow, thank you very much. Here, let me get my mic back up. Gotta do this right. Well, that's Mylan. Mylan, has, I've been on a few streams of Mylan. Yeah. You need to have a second microphone taped to your mic to your mic, and you mute it. And when that happens, what you do is you unmute and hit play until you figure out how to get it working. Yeah, I'm not sure what the issue is. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll figure it out for you. Well, I have to, like everybody else, watch more YouTube videos when they get to the part how to incorporate it. Because I got Stream Deck configured to go find the sounds, and I got OBS that can switch my screens on video, but Stream Deck isn't talking to OBS. So when I outputs a signal, the signal, when I hit a button, is coming through my desktop speakers. So I just need the source to be in the stream so everybody can hear it. And then is I guess Stream Deck I'm... part of StreamYard? Stream Deck. The Stream Deck is a thing with the buttons on it. Oh, gotcha. It's separate. It's yeah, the Elgato. It's got all the little buttons. So you can program it to do anything and everything. Yeah. Nice. It's really nice. nice. I use it when I do my live streaming. You can switch between cameras and stuff. It's really, really nice. Like when you're doing, when I, as I, we were talking earlier on, and like if you have multiple cameras, yeah, hit a button and it switches over, and you can add your trimming and, on, and so on, your, your lower thirds, whatever you want to add in there. It's nice. I want to pull up my camera. It's in my kitchen that looks at this room, too. Um, it's a Z-Moto cam. I got, like, so many of them around the house. And I need to figure out how to import that where I can just hit a button and I can switch. Open it up here. as a web browser. Uh, you can access it via the web browser, can't you? Yeah, I have to. I tried to log in earlier, and I couldn't log in. I can pull it up on my TV. I can go to one of my different options and pull up my cameras on my TV. Yeah. Technically, I share a screen. If you can get, if you can get that up on, as a web browser page. You can share that page, and that allows you to share it out over. Okay. Yeah, I tried to log in earlier. Said I had the wrong password, but it was it was uh, correct. Well, yeah. then you just then then you just do a password reset and thing. Is that right? Yeah, I keep changing my passwords every every two weeks. I keep changing my passwords, and I. I keep forgetting them, and then I. <clears throat> best thing is to write it down. <laughs> in a little no, bit, you know. Then it's no longer secure. And we have another special guest dropping in, Greg from 3D Make It. Hello, hey, Greg, how are you doing? Hey, How's it going, Greg? Not too bad. I really enjoyed the uh, robot streams. They were really, really good. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we took like three hours. We took too long, but we got there. Yeah, no, well, it was it was good. Like I, I even I'm tempted to buy one of those controllers. I ended up uh, looking it up online, and then uh, I found the uh, hold the control or cancel to save. Uh -huh. Post posted that in chat. Yeah, I so. got this off Amazon, and yeah, it's it's really cool. And I got I'm still working on it. Let me make it smaller again. So how many ch how many channels are on those controllers? Uh, six, I believe. 
I think there's a six model and a ten model when I look them up. So, so yeah. my next droid, I'll just have to buy another uh, receiver for it. Nice. So, but uh, I don't think you've been on before. What do you do, Greg? Uh, well, um, I work in K to twelve education, but uh, um, I've been doing three D printing for a while now. And uh, my partner David and I uh, run three D Make It, our YouTube channel, and so we do. Uh, Reviews, hardware reviews. I just did one on screens uh, from Big Tree Tech. Uh, we do like Marlin, how to configure that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm pretty so, sure I'm subscribed. I've seen your videos. Yeah. So, so, but yeah, uh, David and I both work for a K to 12 education institution uh, in uh, Alberta, Canada. Here, so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You're not yeah. the only Canadian that comes in and hangs out with us, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's finally warm here today, so. You mean it's about? You mean you mean it's just below freezing? That rather than mean way below? Oh no, no, it, it's 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 plus two Celsius here, so it's it's above freezing. It's nice. It's, oh. it's everything's melting. It's nice. Yeah, no, right now it's right now it is thirty degrees. Oh, geez. Fahrenheit. So it's just. Oh, sorry. Forgive me. It's twenty five. I just oh, well. Fahrenheit, so it's, it's it's just slightly below zero here. Well, t two weeks ago it was minus forty five, and it doesn't matter Fahrenheit or Celsius at that yeah. point. When you when you they, there's cold, there's winter, there's cold, there's very cold, and then there's stupid cold. And minus forty five is stupid cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I forgot to plug in my car that morning, and oh man, it did not like me. Oh, the it, oh your engine block was cold. Oh yeah, it's 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 it, start, it started, but <laughs> yeah, that's why you have remote start and let it run for a while before you go out there, so then uh, the engine be happier. I wish. <laughs> I had a truck years ago that had a block heater on it. You could plug it in by the grill and help it warm up. It warm Some it up. Some trucks have those. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I I just forgot to plug it in the night before. All of ours have block heaters. That's not a problem. I just you just got to remember to actually plug it in. Yeah, they're common in Sweden as well, in places like that, yeah. Norway, Sweden, Denmark. They all have block heaters on their cars and trucks. Yeah, anywhere where it's cold, for sure. Yeah, Michigan is cold in winter, but we don't have – block heaters are not standard here. Really? No. you think in uh, northern United States they would have block heaters. But... Not standard. Huh. And you can't even have studs in your tires here, so. Well, we don't need – we get so many uh, Chinooks, so we get a warm wind off the mountains uh, that melts – like, we're the – we're like Chicago. We're the windy city of Canada here in Lethbridge. So uh, we we get warm winds all winter, melts all our snow. So we often have brown winters, but, oh, man, when it gets cold. Yeah. yeah we, were, we got hit directly with the polar vortex. I mean, it went directly over us and just stayed there. So the, this is the first day in a month that we've been above – 15 degrees yeah and we and we were in the negative 50 the negative 50s uh it was not good yeah no yeah. no that's it once you go that cold it's nothing everything just starts breaking it's just horrible it, it makes me question why i why i live here <laughs> well, well my dad is originally my mom and dad are originally from south africa and uh uh, he, when they got a divorce, he was like, why am I still here? So he, he lives in, uh, Costa Mesa, California now. So okay. <laughs> he left, he left the cold. Yeah. It makes me, it makes me question my sanity when I'm, yeah. when I'm when, like, I don't, I love the summers when it hits a hundred degrees. I'm happy when it, I'm not happy until the temperature goes over 70 and at 70 or higher, then I'm willing to take my coat off. Right. Before that I'm not, but when it's, um, when it's crazy cold like this, I, I even question my own sanity, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got it moving? Oh, nice. Well, he had it, he had it moving the other night on the stream. I didn't see all the stream. Uh, Jerry, you might want to. I, I've got to build one of those. Yeah, Jerry. What? I would suggest. Hey guys, I'm gonna pop out and I'm gonna pop back in again. All right, man. All right, Matt. I would suggest adding some weight to the inside on the front of that. Yeah, I can put the batteries down there. Yeah, that because when, right. when you accelerate, she she it does a wheelie. Yeah, it won't tip over, but yeah, it does a wheelie. Yeah. 
Uh, th those are so cool. Now you want me to build one. Oh, something else. I don't know if you guys seen it. I showed it on the stream, but when if you've known me for very long, I like to build things big usually. And I figured, well, if I'm, we're going to do the droid build, why would I want to do 100%? Let's do 175%. So here's a body on another one. But once I printed it, it's like, well, wait a minute. How am I going to figure out the electronics? The little tiny servos won't work. So I have a complete another droid like that printed out at 175%. Okay, so, Jerry. Yeah. Hit that wah, wah, wah button. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> but you should be able to get a little bit more powerful servos, and that would yeah. do the trick. Yeah, yeah. There are things out there. I just have to figure out. Yeah, yeah. You just. It's I so mean, cool. the, the small servos. You know, it might move it, but yeah, a little, slightly bigger might do the trick well, better. The small would probably do it. It just don't want to do it as fast, and it right. have because it, it is heavier, but not by much. So yeah. Yeah, it might not have the torque. So. Yeah. yeah. But electrical, most even small electrical motors have a lot of torque. Because That's true. It's instant, it's instant torque. It's yeah. not like, an, like a, a gas engine where you have to accelerate up to a speed. You right. immediately get that torque from the, from the moment you hit, you hit yeah. go. So. Yeah. It's twitching right now. i got to trim it out, probably. How many yeah. channels do you need, Jerry? Do you need all six, I um, imagine? How, how, how many how many servos are you controlling? Uh, three. So you're only using three channels, so you could probably get away with a four-channel remote, easy, if you well, wanted to. I, well, you, you know what? I probably got probably eight or ten control uh, controllers that I don't ever use with servos and the whole bit, you know, for my planes. Uh -huh. I'll look around, see if I've I'll look around and see if I've got them. I'll I'll send you one. Oh, cool! That'd be awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because because really, if you're only you if you're only using a couple servos, well, most most of them are six channel. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't know if you needed more than six. Is my yeah, well, yeah, when he with or twenty four. When he modifies it so the antenna goes up and then and then the lights come on and off, then he'll need more. Well, the receiver can hold however many. I've got one, two, three, four, five more spots on this receiver. Where I could have plugged in more things in. And then on the battery pack, like a dummy, uh, Sam mentioned, he says, well, how are you going to plug that into that receiver? So beforehand, I went in and spliced another wire. But by doing that, I cut off the wire to charge it over USB. Uh -oh. Rather than splicing that back in here, I'll just uh, change the plug on the USB. That way, I can just plug this one in. Nice. So, anyway. I, th I think your I think your mic's away from your oh. shirt or something, so you're a little sound a little distant. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. I normally keep it on my head. I got a boom mic I used to talk with all the time, and then I bought this cheap one off Amazon that Zolan told me about for forty five bucks, and this thing works great. Uh, I'm good. I may have to look into that. Because right now, right, I got a USB one and I'm tethered to my computer. So, let's see, I've got a picture of it right here. I didn't delete it. I don't think. Yeah, this one right here, off Amazon. It's like forty five, forty six dollars. It does have a lapel mic, but I last time I filmed the video with the lapel with my beard and everything in the way it was really muffled, so I just got over nice. my ear. But yeah, it's like it's under fifty bucks and it's, it's works great. I done a four hour live stream and never went dead on me. It got close, but it never kept it was still working. Nice. Yeah, I, I the, the lapel one that I use is um I get about three about four hours out of it out of each each battery set. Nice. It's not rechargeable though. Yeah, yeah, we we're, we're looking at upgrading some equipment over time. So but there's only you know, when you're doing this as a hobby, it's it, there's only so much budget you got. Yes. So, are you in your garage, one of the rooms in your house, or where? I'm. I'm in the 3D printing dungeon here. So I'm in. I'm in the basement. I've got uh, three printers. I got one here, one here, and I got my anti-cubic shear on there. Mm -hmm. And then I got three printers over on that side of the room over there. So awesome. So I'm just right now. I'm I'm building a uh, small um, power just like a hobby power supply mm -hmm. with uh, some covers. So I, that's what's printing on the 
CR10 V2 over there. So, and yeah. you're off on the weekends. You work during the week. Yeah, just yeah, I work during the week. I'm weekends we're off, and Sundays we do a live stream at ten o'clock um, for three D Make It. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah, I de I definitely not got to uh, subscribe and get the the um, the onto that Patreon and get the robot files because that I definitely got to print print one of those. Let me scroll up in chat and you can. Let's see. I can just put it in private chat. Let's see. Oh, I got the I got the link to the, okay, okay. To, to the Patreon. I just got to actually go on and join it into my Patreon and subscribe. Okay. So. Yeah, that's the first Patreon I've ever actually joined has been Mr. Bagley's. Yeah. Uh, running my group and all the hundreds of models I got sitting around me. I mean, I bought a lot of them. A lot of them are give, given to me by uh, the people that designed them. So they want me to print them and show them off. And then I still, I don't know. I just got a problem with printing. So <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I have the um, <clears throat> the 3D printing addicts group. You know, and we do, we don't help we don't help you. We enable you even more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my wife said, at least I'm not out at the bar drinking or something. I'm so, so, so it's more of a two step program. Join, yeah. join, and then print. Get out your credit card. Buy another. <laughs> have I ever showed you my hobby room? Have you ever seen it, Greg? No, I don't think oh, I Oh, it's crazy. Okay, there's a desk I just put in. This is the biggest room. I'm in I'm this next to my kitchen, the largest room in the house that I'm currently in. Oh, yeah. And that's where I'm currently sitting, and there's a bunch of printers back there, and I got a, a shelf I built a few weeks ago to throw three up top. Nice. Is that a, is that a CR10 Max? Uh, yeah, I just got that from a friend. Yeah, I, I'm rebuilding a CR10 Max. It never, ever printed right. So I've I've uh, I've got a new screen for it. I got that I'm throwing on. It's for the it's the 4.3 from Big Tree Tech, and then I'm putting an SKR uh, turbo in there. So I'm just in the process of wiring out a breakout board so I can adapt the uh, the newer board to it because they use the long ribbon cable. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's my next project. I'll probably film it for our channel so i've only printed two things on this mac so far i got it from a friend of mine he had a, a s5 he wanted me to rebuild for him and he was using the control panel off the max on the s5 and because of the ribbon cable and how that's all set up i couldn't he, he said well if you get my s5 up and running you can have the control board i said well i have to take the can gantry with it because it has a ribbon cable going to everything so you, like there there's actually an adapter breakout board that you can buy off of amazon i think it's around 12 bucks you plug it literally on the end of that ribbon cable, and then you've got the regular cables to go to like an SKR or whatever, and away you go. Um, I'm getting a little more geeky. I'm cutting them and I'm crimping and, and yeah. whatnot. But they they've actually got it all broken out, so you know it still works with the BL touch and everything. So yeah. so it's to totally doable, and it's only like I want to say it's like between eight and twelve bucks on Amazon. It's a CR10 Pro and a CR10. Max breakout board. Yeah, two days ago, I finally got the right BL touch on it since they make three different versions and they're not interchangeable and they won't work with this and that. I have uh, easy <laughs> BLs from TH3D on all my yep. printers. And in four years, I've never ever used a BL touch once until I got this one. And then I had another BL touch on it and the center was red. It wouldn't work. I had him in here in Vegas mail me back the one that he didn't use on his printer and now it works fine. So I've only done two prints on it. It's 100% stock. Here's let me switch my camera. So if you upgrade Marlin, it fixes the BL touch issue. So okay, you, Marlin was upgraded from Tiny Machines that he bought it from in Texas. Yeah, if you go to the the stock one, you can actually turn on the feature where you can specify 3.3 or 5 volt, and then that you can actually toggle it and fix it fixes that BL touch issue right up. Looks good though. Yeah. Yeah. What the first one it wasn't quite sticking to the bed, and this is a convertible. That happened during the live stream last night. So <laughs> I put nanopolymer on the bed in that area. And then, of course, it, it didn't let loose. And it came out yeah. real nice. Yeah, so you're I, saying, you're I, saying yeah. having the having a different BL touch, it was a voltage thing. That's why it was blinking yeah, red. Correct. So so the BL touch has two versions. The original version, I think, was 5 volt. Then they had a, a version in between, hey, which was 3.3 only. And then the newest version is both 3.3 and 5 volt tolerant. 
So then it fixes the issue. But in uh, Marlin, in the configuration.advance, you can actually go in there and you can tweak it and tell it that you want to be either version or you want a menu item so that you can toggle it. And then okay. in, in the Marlin screen, you can go through and you can actually toggle whether you want which mode. Okay. And then and then away it goes. So the, so it is possible to do it, but that's one of the reasons why I want I didn't couldn't make the so this is the one of uh, actually I got one of the screens. So that that is the from a CR10 okay. uh, Max. So I, I'm taking it off because you can't adjust the firmware nicely on it to make it compatible with other boards. Yeah. So I, that's yeah. why even um, the guys at T3D, uh, if, you, if you ever change the boards out, you have to go with one of their screens as well to work with yeah. their board, with yeah. Their boards. Yeah. Yeah, it uses DWIN, but it's a different version. Like, Creality just needs to be consistent because their new CR or um, Ender V2 uses a DWIN screen, but it's compatible with Marlin. And this old one, you have to jump through hoops to make it work. So, yeah. well, they are consistent. They're consistently well, inconsistent. Like, <laughs> yes. like we always tell people, whenever you get a printer, what do I upgrade? You don't upgrade anything. You learn the machine, and then once you Absolutely. print with it and learn it, then you start changing. Yes. I've been in the hobby for four years. I have fourteen I printers, but when I got this one, I want it one hundred percent stock, and then I'll try it out. And then if I don't yeah. like something, I'll change it. So. A couple of people said, well, why do you want a BL touch on it? You can do this. Sure. I got easy ABLs and all the other printers. I want yeah. it stock to see how it performs for me before I automatically start doing this yeah. and this and this. So, so I have I have BL touches on actually all my printers. Like every one of my printers. Yeah, I, 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 I have, have one. Printers. I have one printer. Or sorry, let me rephrase that. I have two printers that have um uh, well, one has a BL touch. One has their own, uh, the manufacturer's own version of. Uh, oh, is it sensor, a 3D right? touch? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's it's not even a BL touch. It's one of those um, proximity sensors. Oh, okay. gotcha. most of my printers have no. Um, how often do you break the pins on the BL touch, or how often do you have trouble? Since I know nothing about them. So, so I have not on any of mine broken the pins. Um, now we have a Core X Y that we were trying at the office with a BL touch, but um, it, it had a voltage issue. So it kept dropping the pin and it, it we, I think we lost like three pins until we figured out the voltage issue. Once we figured out the voltage issue, no problems. So, um, and that one, we were also pushing it to the limits cause it's a, it's a large core XY. So I think we we're driving it way too fast. You did it, too high an output. And, yeah. and I think I think it just hit resonance and started dropping the pin. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I most of mine do manual leveling. My my big my new thing now is IDEX printers. I have two of them. Yeah. And I like them. Um, and there there's a possibility of a third one coming my way. Um, but I, I'm getting into, it's not because I, I'm not a big dual printing type of person, dual color. I, before, I like IDEX because when you want to manufacture, um, make parts, duplicates of parts, and do it fast, IDEX is fantastic. It well, really, Liam, really helps. Liam got lucky on, uh-oh, he dropped off. Oh, Where'd you go, Greg? Right? Oh, oh, he's still there, but his device not connected. Oh, his internet was going down. Something. He'll be back. Yeah, give him a moment. He'll come back. I've got I've got one printer with a BL touch on it. It's a TiVo Flash, and they came stock with a they came stock with a BL touch. And I have a, I have all right. I don't know. I, I have I was... special sensors. I, I use inductive sensors on yep. all my metal beds. But my but the flash that has the BL touch never had a problem with it. Yeah, I only have one printer with an actual BL touch, and that was my my Ender Five Plus. That yeah. came stuck with it with the, with the BL touch. The I, Ender, I, go ahead. Oh, go go ahead. The Ender Three V Two, as an example, is a pain in the butt because when you level the bed when you first get it, you're fine and dandy, and then a couple prints later, it. It's really weird. The Z drops on it. The X gantry 
for no reason at all. You can sneeze on it and it drops to the bed. Yeah. So once you love when it goes to print, you're like a half an inch high and it, it's really screwy. So that printer does definitely need a sensor put on it so you don't have to go and run the – No, you, can't, no. you, you can't need to put on – you need to change your Z screws. They're not a screw, but the, the, the nut that goes onto it. Oh, the back with the anti-backlash. With the anti-backlash because yeah. that will keep the tension and stop it from dropping. But so, I've never had to do that on any other Corality printer, so why yeah. is this one – because so they, they kill power to the steppers. So um, the CR10 Max is notorious for that. It, 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 it gets out of true all the time. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I'm switching the boards, because I want the uh, independent steppers on the Z so that I can run the G34 to automatically um, trim up the gantry. Yeah, and that you know, I, we actually just did a video on that, and so all my larger printers of my CR10 V2 here and my Chiron, I use run uh, G34 just before I do a G29 on the board, and it's it's like 0 0.002 is is the deviation at that point. So it's a good place to start when you're doing a level, but you need independent stepper drivers. To drive those two Z yeah, steppers, Other, otherwise yeah. you can't do it. And they put two separate chips on the board, right? And and so, so for something like the Voron or anything which has four, four independent, you can do. You can also do it, and it it will level up your gantry before a print too. So which is really nice. Yeah. Well, that's this is the same system that the Daedalus uses. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they use three steppers. Is what they use. They have three steppers on their on their, on their Z axis. Yeah, and you can do it with two, three, four. It, you know, you can yeah. do it with any. Um, Duet has a process to do the same thing in their in the RepRap firmware. It does a, it's a, the same type of thing. Um, and Marlin has just added an addition to the G34 where you can actually go in there. And uh, Chris Riley just did a, a an additional part of the video, which uh, which you can actually set your idle stepper voltage. So what happens is when it kills the steppers it leaves the voltage just high enough so it doesn't drop. So if you're having that problem where it's dropping, you can go into Marlin and just configure the idle stepper voltage so that it holds it. it and even when it's off, until you power it completely down, of course, right? It, it, when it disables the steppers, you're not going to get that. But the problem he has is, is it's an 8-bit board, and the more you turn on, the, the, you're going to run into issues. You what may not be an 8-bit board. Sorry? Which is an 8-bit board? Your 10 Max. No, it should be 32-bit. Oh, no, yeah, he said be. he upgraded them. He, he's, oh, okay, then this, that's different. Sorry, because... No, the yeah. Max I haven't upgraded. It's all stock, but I'm assuming... Oh. Uh, no, it depends I think when he bought it. I don't know. At some point, oh, I think it's an 8-bit board. I, it's an 8-bit board. I, yeah. I, just pulled, I just pulled one out. It's an 8-bit okay. board. It's, so, got, it's got silent steppers, hmm. but it's an 8-bit board. Yeah, right. and the problem you're going to run into there is the more features you turn on and enable, you're going you you're running out of memory in the chip to upload that firmware. Absolutely, you have to you have to ch pick and choose what you're turning on and off. Yeah, that's why Which, they don't have half the features turned on that, that most people like. Yeah, because the board can't take it. Well, that's the touch what, screen does have baby stepping, which is the number one thing every printer must have. Oh, absolutely. So, but what I couldn't save it on the touch screen, I didn't see a save option. So I watched Michael from Teaching Tech, and when he went down and after a million pushes, getting it where he wanted, he just left it, and I guess it saved itself. Yeah, it's 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 because it it's sending the G code from the screen, right? Because the the way the screen works is it you're just whatever you're touching, it's sending that G code command to the board. Mm -hmm. okay. So once you get it there, it's it's saved. So okay. the, you you could go through and at the end of all that. Just do a save to EEPROM just to be. I didn't see an option to save to EEPROM, but it's there. Yeah, it may not be on. It, yeah it, if it's not there, plug in your computer and do a, a, yeah. a 500. Yeah, and you're 500 good. Yeah. Save, yeah. 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 But yeah, there there are small little things that may, that make a difference to your to it. Like, um, like I, I'm I like running stock unless stock doesn't give me what I want. Absolutely. And when stock doesn't give me what I want, then I'll just go for hell for leather and I'll do whatever it needs to do to get there. And right. with 32-bit boards, like I have a Robin Pro board. One of my printers has a Robin Pro. And 
it's got more empty, unused memory. I could put two versions of Marlin there and still have space left over. Yeah. I'm only using fifty, but less than fifty percent of the memory on the board with the with the stock settings. Yeah. Now with turning them on, I've closed got close to fifty percent, but I still haven't breached it. No, no, you you get a lot more memory, and as long as you don't have some of the older eight bit boards that only had the half amount of memory, like if you have two hundred fifty six k, you could turn on a lot of features. It's yep. the original Enders that only had the half the one hundred twenty eight. One hundred twenty eight, yeah, right that that you you had to really be picky on what you turned on but having the newer boards from mks or or any of the or big true tech and being able to actually, turn on all the features is but nice. btt have actually downgraded their memory for their base and their chip they're not using the full memory they have they don't make it fully available some of the boards on some of the boards yeah mm. we actually we actually ran into a problem on one of the the so the 1.4 Turbo E3, the new one, mm -hmm. um, where they added they added an EEPROM into it, and th that sounds great, right? But then you start turning stuff on, and they ha only enabled uh, a limited memory bandwidth. Memory so block, then, yeah. so then you get compiling errors. So then you have, and the way they enabled it was they used the, the I2C bus. So if you go into the pins file and disable the I2C ROM. All of a sudden, you're back to like an SKR 1.3 without oh, capacity, the, yeah. and then all of a sudden you get you can save whatever you want, but you don't have, you don't have the the limitation issue on that board, which is is crazy that they would they would put a ROM chip on it, but not big enough to save all the features you'd want. Yeah, so, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. it's half thought out. That's the problem. Hey, Greg, Greg, are you yeah. on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Uh, yeah, we're and YouTube. So right. I, I can, you're, I can you're welcome to post all those in chat if people would sure. like to come join you and find you. Sure. Put, post in the private chat and, and yeah, I will. Post you. Are you a member of my 3D printing group on uh, Facebook? I think I am. I'll have, to, I'll have to look. I'm not, it may not. It, it may not show up as. It may just be my full name okay. um, with Facebook. But I, I'll uh, I'll right. put the link to YouTube here. Yeah, I've had the group up for like four years. One second. And anyone who's out there listening, like, subscribe, thumbs up. Okay, guys. I, I've already done that. Yeah. I Here, done make, make one comment in chat on YouTube, and I'll give you a wrench, and then you can post them. Just say anything, and then I'll give you a wrench. I, I thought I, I thought I did say something earlier. No, no, he meant if you. Yeah, he meant if you go. Oh, and now. Um, yeah, just yeah, say anything, now, and then he can promote you. Oh, okay, perfect. One sec. Yeah, I'll make you special, like everybody with the, with the wrenches. Yeah. Uh, so I was I was watching a very interesting engineering video the other day, and they were taking. Uh, this has a lot to do with the Z, with your uh, with your Z motors. Mm -hmm. But he took a he took a random set of similar, uh, same brand, uh, uh, Z motors. Uh, just just. Uh, standard uh, NEMA 17s and he mounted 12 of them on a board and he sent similar signals to every one of them and he had a very large he had a very large gear on each one of them so he could measure the amount of, of movement on each stepper and each stepper ran a different angle for the given steps yes that's normal that's but normal. They're, they're, they're not they're, all mechanically so the therefore, same. Therefore, you need a belt between every one of your any one every one of your drives so that you're moving that that uh, that Z rod exactly the same amount of degrees for for every movement, every single movement. Uh, no, not necessarily. You just make sure you match your steppers. Like you want to make sure that if you're replacing a stepper replace it with the exact same model because if you had a, a 0.9 degree stepper and then you have a 1.8 degree stepper and you run them, they are not going to run the same. Uh, and if but you get he, one, he had exactly the same steppers and manufacturer and they were show they show a different movement. That's interesting. One. That does happen. That's why when, um, in, if you have a dual extruder machine, um, your manufacturer should enable the option to have two 
um, two options for e steps, one per extruder because yes. if you extrude differently. Correct. Now, the same applies for z stepping when you're running dual um, stepper motors. Yep. And the only way around that is then the top of your uh, between the top of your two z z extruders, your or st your, your z screws, put an idler on top of them and run a belt between them with a tensioner, and that way then it'll force them to be in sync. Yeah, that I I prefer independent myself. Um, but that no, that's a good way. But they're, they're independent. But yeah, they're Z steps. Like if I if I tell one to move a hundred millimeters down. Yeah, yeah. The other one, just based on what Dave just said, the other one could move ninety nine millimeters. Correct. One hundred one millimeters. Yes. Even though they're a separate controllers. So yeah. if you can control the the Z steps independently, right, or Put a belt between them that will force them to stay in sync. Yeah, my uh, CR tens rarely get out of sync, and I don't have a belt across the top. It's very rare. Well, it, it, and it depends how how you have it configured. Um, if your voltages are just slightly off between the two stepper drivers, for yep, example. Yep. So if you had a, a twenty two hundred eight or twenty two hundred nine in UART, you can more accurately you know make sure that they're the same. But if you have some of the older boards, right, and you have the little pot. It's easy to be a couple of millivolts off on each, and then that could definitely, you know, cause problems. And then putting the idlers on top and whatnot could compensate for that. I agree, sure. but most manufacturers do not create um, set up their printers in UART mode. No, no, which is unfortunate. Nines, they don't all manu all UART. manufacturers get us to test everything for them, give them feedback, and eventually they correct the problem. It, it yeah, takes they, a while sometimes, though. So, yeah. yeah, and they still have never. I don't know any manufacturer who enables UART. Yeah, they, most of them are in standalone, which is unfortunate. I mean, I S, SBI and UART is, I mean, the, UART's the way to go. Yep. Because then you can digitally can configure everything down to this down to um, uh, point zero zero decimal to yep. uh, voltage accuracy. So that way, yep. then you can get them both exactly on the same thing. Same for steps. Actually, I prefer if the steppers, if the E steps were actually bigger than that, where it was point zero 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 accuracy. Yeah, I, do, I don't. I don't. I I don't know if the boards are actually going to be able to handle that accuracy of a, a voltage no, change. But but when you round them off, it can be it, it can be off. That's true. So that's, that's why true. yeah. For the the more decimal places you have. The, and it can be enabled, but the more decimal places you have in your in your e steps, because when you do your calculations, you're not going to get a two digit; you're going to get a four or six digit response. That's true. When you do yeah. calibration, and the more accuracy, the more accuracy you have there, the better the response. And then in the UI, when you're enabling in the menu, and, and if you're going to control the e steps so out of, out of the, the Marlin menu, yeah. you should set the decimal space longer. That yeah. way, we save it, but you have to set it in the UI. Or you have to go in with Pranaface and actually type it in. All, all my printers have Pies and I all have Octoprint, so I'm going through the terminal all the time. I use so. I use Octoprint, but I also <clears throat> I don't use it everywhere because I get a lot. I, I do a lot of um, testing of machines, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to put an a uh, Pie on a machine I'm testing. Well, I mean, all all my main machines that I use have Octoprint. I have yeah. like my MakerBot over there that rarely gets used doesn't have. A pie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm similar. And then you, do you use um, uh, Octafarm to manage them? I don't. I, I haven't because I don't really use them as a farm. So, so uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I, I'll have to look at that, but no, yeah. I haven't. It gives you visibility of all of them and gives you the ability to tune in to find out what each printer is doing, what's successful, what's for, um, you can uh, put cameras on them. You can do it. I all. just have I just have four tabs open. All right, I'm just saying you can do it all for one UI. Hey, yeah, Red Light, no, I gotta absolutely. grab some bones for the dogs. Hey, Red Light, how are you, man? But no, I, I that's what I, I like to do that way. Um, but uh, but when I'm testing machine, it never goes on. To, I'm not gonna put a pie in the machine. I'm just testing. But I will, at some point, make sure a pie will run on it. Absolutely. So some printers out there don't like pie. Uh, I yeah, it's it. If they are not happy where they use some proprietary G code stuff, yeah, no. Because a lot of them actually happy. do use proprietary stuff. Yeah. And it makes it hard. Um, yeah. Like, 
uh, with Lawrence Bot will work with a Pi, but with the interesting thing about about Lawrence Bot uh, machines, they have to use their version of Octoprint because they have commands in their version of Marlin that is not in normal G code. So and you have you have to use their version of it because mm -hmm. their profiles has like they have they have a wipe area outside of the print bed and all this other stuff that you have to go through. I've got and, a Pi 3 on most of my printers that I'm working with uh, with yeah. Octoprint, and I love it. Sure, yeah. I can turn around, get an SD card, pop it in the machine. I'd rather sit here and monitor everything and the temperatures and video, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't miss swapping SD cards. It's so much nicer drag and drop than you're getting. Yeah. Actually, one, well, of my, one of my printers I can actually has it got a camera on it, not an Octopi. It's got a camera built into the best part of the printer. Oh, yeah. And I can upload a fat, my my G, my G, my G code to the camera and then tell the printer to print from the camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have uh, cameras on all of mine. And then, uh, oh, hey, that's nice. Yeah. That's on the new resin printer, the Frozen Mighty 4K, which I've had nothing but problem after problem with. Well, that's pretty good. good. No, this has been hollowed. Was yeah, I have a, I've got an Elgu Mars original I've had for a couple of years, and I've done a couple hundred prints on it. And I've only had two failures out of, you know, a couple hundred prints. Then I get the Frozen Mighty 4K, which is much larger, and I had failure after failure after failure with multiple types of resin. I'm using Strytech right now, and Strytech seems to be going strong. That's I still nice. have to, I got a lot of paint work to do on this. But his head comes off, it's interchangeable once I get it all painted. This is from Wicked, Wicked's nice. Patreon. And where's his third head? I'm still painting it, but here's his original head. Oh, nice. I'm not done painting, so I'm still working on it. But real cool. That's really oh. nice. <clears throat> I don't anyway, know. I'm using that rub and buff. <laughs> uh, painted black, and I'm using rub and buff with a, a popsicle stick to apply it. Talked to a friend of mine here in town, and he recommend to put it on the popsicle stick i was gonna use my finger but since your finger is soft you'd get you'd get rubbing buff you'd get the paint oily paint down there we didn't want it so popsicle stick is nice and flat it's real easy to wipe it where you need it on the high spots so yeah, you're way we're way more talented at the painting than me <laughs> yeah i got a lot to learn i'm not an expert but you know i'm i, I do okay i'm artistically challenged me too <laughs> Take your time, go slow. A lot of people work with paint and they just they, they blob it on. It's too thick and they don't know what to do with it. Well, your paint needs to be fairly thin and put a little bit on and brush it all the way out, just like your paint in the house. You don't want a blob of paint yeah. or on a wall. You got to roll it out to where you can't see the lines, basically, and then let it dry and then go into your next coat. Just take your time. If you're older, you're going to need to wear glasses and have plenty of light because as you get older, you can't see and you need a lot of light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't too. It's me. It's like, I painted this rocket because it was easy. It was white, and, uh, and one of the sections was black. So I, <laughs> I airbrushed it all white, and then I got the black part, and I airbrushed it all black. That was easy, right? <laughs> well, I've got my Mando helmet back there, and I haven't, I haven't started it. So maybe I need some tips. So a good primer, and then I don't know what I should use for metallic paint. So well, I got some paint that now it's got chrome paint that I airbrushed on. And if you go over it to it, well, first I prime it gray, and then I use a high gloss black, and then I paint everything high gloss about black if you're going to put a chrome over it. And then if you airbrush a chrome over it, you got to do a real light coat, and it'll make it shine. If you do multiple coats and you go over it and go over it, it's going to turn silver on you. Ah, so you got okay. to kind of know when to stop. You know, paint it once you get the shine you want, stop. You know, don't keep adding paint layer after Le layer. Less is more. Yeah, less is more. And, uh, yeah, I airbrush a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't airbrush that much. Like my wife says, I got half my stuff isn't painted. The other half is. It's just I don't take the time. But when I painted the statue, I uh, used rattle can gray prime primer outside with the rattle can. And then I brought it in, airbrushed uh, black on it real well. I could have used done it outside. And then I, uh, let's see, the chrome on it, or actually a sword, I just used silver paint. I didn't chrome it. And then I used rub and buff over top of that, which is like an oil-based uh, paint. That a lot of people they put damage on weapons. They'll print Star Wars weapons and they'll put like scratch marks on it. They get right. silver rub and buff. They put a little bit on their finger and you just kind of smear it. it. Looks like streaks, like scratch marks. 
So, yeah, I'm not sure if I want it looking pristine or if I want it looking battle worn. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, the one I had finished of the Mandalorian, I gave away for a Christmas present. And I have another one that I just printed from Nico Industries where it's got electronics on the inside and fake padding. Let me grab it. I had a layer shift at the very top of the helmet, so I had to reprint the top. Unfortunately, I printed out a PETG, which I have a lot of stringing, and PETG is hard to... Uh, let's check my camera button here. And let me move things around. Yeah, here's a larger Mando helmet right here. Yeah. I still have some string on the inside I have to get rid of, but that's from Nico Industries. And the top, yeah. you can see where I, I, I'm doing some putty work there. Yeah. It'll eventually get done. Well, it looks and then sim I went, similar to mine. Let's see if I can find mine. This is at 110%. 100% I didn't think would fit me, so I went ahead and made it a little bit bigger. But you can always line it with, with foam or whatever to make it come, to make it fit anyway. Yeah, on the very top of it. We all have foam from printers and stuff. Just take a block of that and hot glue it into the top. Yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, it's it's uh, you can see some of the infill here. Yeah, but you'll fill that when you when you do a filler on that and you send it out, it'll go away. Yeah, but that's that's the other than that, uh, it it printed great. You didn't have enough walls. That's why you see the infill. Yeah, yeah, I. It was such a long print. I, I cheaped out and only did two perimeters instead of three. So yeah, you need a minimum of three. Yeah. Everything I do is six four four and simplified three D. Oh yeah, six four four. Six four four on all my models. What I use with uh, like five percent infill. And then for my shield, I went on Amazon. I got the shield here off Amazon. It's fairly thick and heavy duty. I'll just score it with a knife. I'll cut it out and then hot glue it in. Uh, the I, last one I got a. I got a, just a, a little bit of a cheap uh, visor thing off of Amazon that's tinted, and then it's very flexible. So Yeah. My first one was, and once you could actually, when you're talking about, probably cut it out with scissors. Yeah. And uh, I had used some silver tape, uh, aluminum tape, to tape it in my other helmet, but it came unstuck. So before I mailed it to Texas, I hot glued it in. I just mm -hmm. held it in there real good with my hand, and I hot glued it in everywhere, and it held it fine. And I mailed it off. No. Yeah, that works. I've been printing a lot with uh, the Prusa, like slicing with the Prusa slicer a lot lately. And man, it's it slices so nice. The you, profiles, the default pro profiles for even the Corality printers are just fabulous. You should, now, there's, it's harder to get um, profiles. Um, you should try Idea Maker. I, 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 we actually, I think on our website, we have some idea maker profiles. Idea we, maker is if, if you're, especially if you're doing mechanical parts. Um, Jerry, put yourself full screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is I, the chrome paint I bought off Amazon. It's called Spaz Stick Mirror Chrome Paint. Get off Amazon. Little bottle, you shake it up. I dump that in my airbrush and spray that. Now, if you're doing a high-gloss black finish, you could probably, I haven't tried it, but you could probably go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a, a rattle can of their chrome paint, and as long as you got the high-gloss finish, you could experiment. That might work fine. But you just got to remember, you can't do it too heavy because you're just going to make a silver helmet. Right. You have to do that yeah, light from, coat. That black has to beam through it. Yeah, you need to be about probably about eight or eight or ten inches away from it when you're spraying you know yeah, you, have to, you have to experiment yeah start off the park spray come across and then st and stop off the other side all right maybe i'll print a little section of helmet separately and experiment with finishes on it yeah or just take any any old print uh you know your a support a raft you can pretty much use anything so. but airbrushing is the way to go though because it puts on the microfine coat and you get you, it's the best way to do it, you know. I, I have an airbrush kit. I've never opened it, but I've got one. <laughs> yeah, well, man, time to start working on that now. Yeah, yeah mine originally came off Amazon. It was like 75 or 80 bucks. It did not have a holding tank. If I could rebuy one, I would have got one with a holding tank, but I've never had a problem. People say if you don't have a holding tank, it's going to surge. I've never had a problem with anything surging, but uh, from the get-go, I should have got a small tank. Oh, that, this this guy's just a little guy and has like the little bucket on the top and you spray yeah, yeah nothing, you nothing them, fancy you can yeah. get them at harbor freight they sell um airbrushes yep. yeah i bought a good airbrush my airbrush then i replaced the gun i bought a better one's like 130 bucks it's uh 
can't think of the brand name, but it's a good airbrush. Yes. Yeah. And you could use a compressor in your garage. I mean, anything will work as long as you have a water trap on it and you turn the pressure way down and you have an adapter to go to your gun. Anything would work. But in your house, people buy a small portable. But if you're spraying outside or in your garage, any compressor you own will work as long as you have a water trap for moisture and you crank the pressure way down to 8 to 15 uh, PSI. No, I, was, I was just going to ask how many PSI is, is low enough pressure? Yeah, I'd, I'd watch a video on YouTube, watch a couple videos because I don't remember exactly for different paints. There's different different ways of spraying. There's different PSIs, but it's real low. So okay. anything would technically work. Yeah, and you can adjust the, the paint flow like we did with the with the the uh, the actuator. You can actually increase or decrease the paint flow by moving the needle in or out by dumping more paint or not. Right. Yeah, and in most cases you're doing very quick light passes anyway. So. Right. I set mine up when I paint. When I did mine, I um, I set up a box, a big cardboard box, a really giant size cardboard box, as my paint um, location, and I did it in the garage. So it was in, it was open air for me, and I and I just did it inside the box, so it didn't go. And most of the vapors, um, stayed within the box in most cases. Like this head here, there's no reason for me to airbrush this. I just use a regular brush on it. And to try to get the skin tone, I've never painted a black person's skin before. I just mix some brown. I put a couple drops of black in it. I kept mixing it up with the brush to try to get the skin tone right. I think I might make him a little darker. I'm not sure. But you just got to kind of experiment with skin tones. I've never been very good at painting skin tones. But you just got to experiment and practice. The more you paint, the better you get. And if you don't paint that much, well, then you never get better. You just have to practice. <laughs> So then if you screw up the eyes, paint them over. And a lot of times when people paint different textures on skin, they'll, they'll take a matte finish out of a rattle can. They'll lightly dust their model with a rattle can. That way, when they do the next layer, if they screw it up, they can wipe it off. Because if you build mm -hmm. up different layers and you make a mistake and you go to wipe it off, you just wiped all the way through to your primer. and right. you it. So you want to do a light matte finish if you're not really good at what you're doing. Or if you mess up the eyes... You get them where you want them. You can lightly dust them. There's a man's video on YouTube. His name is, oh, God, I can't think of it. But he takes some really custom cool models. It's a Hispanic man from Mexico, I think. And then he makes them better. He repaints them for people. And they've already paid hundreds of dollars for these fancy sculptures. He makes them better. Uh, Raphael Roberto something. I can't quite think of his name. But he's got an awesome channel. Nice. So. Yeah. No, I'm not a painter. And then we, whenever you do paint, go on Google. Just Google pictures of whatever you want to paint. Print out a bunch of pictures or have them on your screen. That way you can try to recreate what you're looking at. Yeah, that's that's where I got a bunch of pictures. Every time I paint something, I print out a bunch of pictures to give me ideas. And I try to recreate what I'm looking at. And I'm you know, you're limited on colors. And a lot of people will go out and buy all kinds of sets. And when I first started out, I went to Walmart and I bought Apple Barrel Cheap Paint. And I have airbrushed it for large things. It's cheap. It works good. It's got plenty of pigment. I've been pretty happy with it. And then I bought some airbrush paint. Then I bought some of this, and I bought some of that. Then I bought a set of Army war paint or whatever they call it off Amazon. We got like 50 little tiny bottles. And to shake those up, if you try to shake them up like this and dump them out on something, it's going to separate. You're going to get straight oil out. So buy little tiny ball bearings, uh, nail polish ball bearings. Oh, yeah, put a couple in. little ball bearings in there, and you can shake up that bottle real good. That way it mixes it. So yeah. just just like a can of uh, spray paint has the little yeah. ball bearing in it. Mix yeah. it up. Same thing. They sell them on Amazon in little bags for three or four dollars. Buy some. Uh, I bought Great some. Tip. They were too small, so I had to get some bigger ones. Great so. tip. Yeah. So the ball bearings out of these things would not work, and they're because they're too big. No, those are roller shaped uh, fidget spinner bearings. No. Yeah. So we're talking the round little ball bearings, chrome yeah. ball. No, I mean the ball bearings are inside in these because these have ball bearings inside them. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's simpler just to buy a bag. Yeah. Let me find my bag that I use. I need that. to drop off, Jerry, because my dog is calling. Um, she right. needs to go out. Well, thank you very much, Liam, for coming by. You're always welcome to join in whenever you want. Thank you, Liam. If I can come thank back you. in, I will. Let me see if I can find them ball bearings here. Um, actually, I think I took them out of the pack and put them in something else. I use a, I use oh, a pad. Ahead. 
I use a patch because I I uh, I typically spray a lot heavier materials, and then I keep I keep uh, several. I've used this since I've had this one since art school back in the seventies, and it's still working still working great. Yeah, my airbrush is an Iwata. That's why I upgraded to. I got an Iwata. It's like one hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, Iwatas are really good, um, but if you're spraying really heavy materials like uh, heavy enamels or, or heavy lacquers. Um, the eyewatas are just a little too fine. Their tips are just a little bit too fine. They like to clog up. That's, that's why I go with the pash because I can. Uh, Hold on there. All right. Yeah. Hello, Dixon, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Jerry? We're good. Glad to see you. Dixon, have you met Greg up top there? 3D Make It? Hi, Dixon. Uh, no, I did. It's his first time. Greg. Hi, no. Nice to meet you. Hi, Greg. Yeah, we get Jerry. new people popping occasionally. It's nice to see new people, new faces. Jerry, how I took you to print your uh, finally got rid of body? What's that, Matt? How long it took you to print out your droid body for your droid? Oh, the, the body itself, the round shell? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. Overnight? Overnight? I don't remember. But like I said, I print everything 644 on layers with like 5% infill, so it's fairly heavy duty. I don't print anything paper thin. Uh, I don't remember. I just loaded up multiple parts on different printers and banged it out. Because I printed it 175%, and then I got way too big. And here comes the stream in a matter of days. Like, I got to reprint this thing at the right scale because the parts I ordered, obviously, I can't do nothing with the bigger one. So, right. anyway. Yes, it'll all fit on an Ender 3, a small printer. The parts, just print out this, print out that. Don't load the bed up with everything all at once. In case you have a failure, you'll have a stringy mess. And then <laughs> some of these parts will finish. And these are over here are still string in midair. So, you know, load up yeah. a few at a time. Yeah, no, no one's ever had that happen. Yeah, yeah. No. that's that's the advantage that's of having impossible. a lot of printers. You can get them all running at once and get her done fast. That's one yeah. thing that's cool about a resin printer is based on height. It doesn't matter how much you have on the build plate; it's going to take as long as it is based on its height. So, right. yep. where you know an FDM, obviously, the more you load it up, the longer it's going to take. Yeah, and yeah. and then the the potential of one one part, if it's a small part releasing or something, is is too high. So, yeah, yeah. If I have a bunch of little wheels and a little bitty tiny parts, I'll do all them at once, and I'll just put a brim on them or something. If there's a small area, so they tend to not let loose. But if you use uh, nano polymer, uh, nano polymer adhesive, nothing is letting loose. So just slather that on the bed and print whatever you want. It's not going to let loose. I'll, I'll sometimes arrange parts on the bed and do one part at a time, and just do all the individual ones so that it's not it's reducing the amount of moves across the bed. So it's just finishing the one there and then going to the next one. I forget so. the slicer that is out. I'm not sure if it's Cura or what. You can have multiple processes. And if something fails, you can go in and uncheck that and ignore that part that's screwed up and you, just print the rest. You and can do that in, Pru in Prusa and Cura. Okay, and it's, right. it's, you enable that in Marlin, actually. Okay. Idea, idea maker, you can do sequential prints. I like that. So it'll do one at a time. If it fails, it just continues on to the next one down the line. Yeah. So Dixon, uh, you haven't been here in a while and well, at least a week, I guess that's not long. And you, not everybody here might know you or people in chat. Who is Dixon Hoffman? What do you do? Uh, I have a 3d print farm. I started about 12 years ago and, uh, I'm a electrician at work. I do a lot of programming. I, I program a lot of robotic machines and keep them running and do the coding on them, whatever it takes to keep them running or make them do whatever they want them to do. And then I got into 3D printing about 12 years ago and got into lasers and CNCs and I'm sort of lucky I have all that down in my basement. Nice. And everything you buy, it has to make you money or you won't invest in it because you don't just do this for fun. You try to make money at everything, right? Yes, any printer I, I, I build will make uh, pay, it has to pay for itself, and I'll give it a month to three months 
I just finished building this second FL Sun, the Q5, and uh, I got all my profiles on Idea Maker now, and I got them working great. And the first parts off of these printers, I got, I built two of these. I got one more coming for my farm, and uh, I was amazed at right out right out of the box putting it together, my parts. This is that one job I talked about six months ago. I finally well, looks, looks pretty clean. Yeah, it's so smooth, all the way around. All, right. all the parts are. What's that, Dave? And that's on. It's on a Delta. Yes, I have. Uh, I have a third one coming, and I already had a a, a, a bigger Delta. So I I had last weekend. I had all. I had thirteen printers running at once. And uh, what's really neat about these deltas is they're about twenty five percent faster. I've never tried a delta. I love the the robotic part of it, but I've never tried one. Hey, Brandy, I need to get a delta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife just had many roofing chats. We want this in the bedroom. We, hey, these have... these things right here, two sixty nine, and now the third one I got a thirty dollars off coupon, and I printed nine piece. So this paid for itself last weekend, and I just put it together. Uh, I think it was last week Friday. Nice. But you can only print nine or ten inches high, from what I can see, right? Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like lasers and CNCs. Everybody wants to build a CNC. I used to have a four by eight foot one and a plasma cutter one that I built, and and I'm telling you what, right here's your your eight by eight cube is your sweet spot. Ninety percent of the production parts I make are will work on. I got hey, four. Four king runes running, making these parts, and they're they're only they were only like 126 bucks a piece. So what so, typically goes wrong on a delta? What is usually a problem area that you're always having to deal with? Uh, the the biggest thing years ago, like I used to have that, uh, what was that gigantic delta? It was like uh, little monster. Yes, I had a little monster, and then I sold it to a, a <laughs> maker. I sold it to a maker place because it was so huge. I made some giant vases, but it wasn't really, it was sort of like a novelty thing. It wasn't really to make money on, on it. We, so. we have two predators. So uh, my, uh, my colleague David has a predator and sure. we have, we have one at work and we love them. They, they work yeah. really well. You have to make yeah. sure you're, you're everything's, you check your tension just like anything else and do your yeah. maintenance and they yeah. work great. I had my my other delta. I have an old any cubic delta, and that's the one that makes all my litho night lights that I sell for twenty bucks a piece. And I've I've never had a problem with that thing. the The biggest thing I would say in the beginning is when years ago when you set up a delta, you had to really do some finagling. But now these FL Sun units, I mean, they have a probe with a magnet that you stick on there. And the the technology changed. All the work is gone. It has a probe right here. I'm sure, you guys probably seen this already. That you just you stick this probe. It's magnetic. There's there's a needle the, stuck to the, it. The the predator has the exact same one. It let, it just magnet and it's right in the center of the. It, yep. it, it works really well. So, yep. It what's really neat about this one too is all my 3D printers have glass mirrors on them. Well, they already have a glass plate on here, and I'm telling you, it, it's, it works awesome. I don't use no hairspray. And uh, once they took all the work out of it, once you do that probing and then you bring it down to the center and you do your offset for your Z, it's like go to town, and they're, they're, they're awesome. What brand is that? FL Sun, the Q5. <laughs> yeah, they're not oh, super yeah. expensive. Um, I, I, I don't have a Delta here. I have all Cartesians here. But yeah. uh, at work we have a delta, and I would like. I'm good. I'm building a Voron, and I'm uh, 2.4. I've I've just started. Uh, you sure. Know, working working on it. Sure. Uh, and I don't have the other one. I don't have is a delta. So I'd like a delta. Yeah. So the the, so, the, the toughest thing I would say with a, a delta now that I think about it is is uh. But I. These are the technology change, like I said. So it's just it's just plug and play. But the older ones, if they're scaling, I always do a twenty by twenty millimeter cube, and then I measure it with a micrometer, with a caliper. And if it's off a little, the only thing is, years ago I would go in and you got to change the 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 rod, 
the rod length yeah. in the in the firmware and and just tweak it a little bit and boom you can get it right on the money and i had to do that with my any cubic that i bought they don't even sell that one i have the one with the the bearing rails on the side, the old Anycubic. Or it, was it a Colossal or something? Yes, the Delta Colossal Anycubic with, with Autodrop, the metal rails. Uh, MP Mini for $99. That's like, well, that's a steal. But Prince nice. Hey, Autodrop, you want to drop in and meet Greg? Dave, a while back we were talking about that idea maker. Yes. I finally I finally took all my, transferred all my things I, I took a, I downloaded the CR10 template and I went from there and I set up last weekend all my printers. I finally got that thing to do as good as Kira as far as smoothness and that with the old Kira because the old Kira algorithms were yeah. so good. My parts were just perfect. And, and after I did that, here's the first piece that came off of these deltas using an idea maker. And I'm telling you, it's like clear, it's like glass all the way around the part. It's just oh, told. Nice. This was the nice. first print off of this Delta. Nice. All the way around, you cannot see no seams, and there's there's no ghosting or. What does it have? Twenty two eights or nines or something in it, or is it just the four nine eight eight steppers in the in the? No, FL they side? they they have they put real good three silent steppers, the good nice. ones with the heat sinks, and then the the extruder feeder is the only one that has the cheaper one. But well, who cares? Dude, it works that's, great. That's fine. Yeah. 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 That's not what gets your ghosting. Your ghosting is on your movement. Exactly. I have, uh, well, when I built my old printers with threaded rods and bearings, I put smoothers on them to get rid of that salmon skin. Yeah. I put the eight diode smoothers on them yeah. and boom, it, it got rid of it right away because it's picking up the frequencies. Yeah, yeah I've got those the printers. I've never taken them off. I've got smoothers well, on my TiVos. The that, smoothers, yeah, salmon the, skin was always a problem with those. Yeah, and the smooth, smoothers are good because they actually are because they're diodes. They they stop the voltage from coming back. So if you do ever manually move your gantry or whatever, you're not getting the generation problem going back into your board to fry your board. So yes. that, that's the other advantage of having those. Sure, you're you're smoothing out that frequency. That's where you yep. get that salmon skin. Then I got stepper dampeners on a couple of my CR10s from a few years back uh, on the well, on the Y axis. Yeah, but on my uh, any cubic Chiron, I have a, a Y axis damper. I uh, think it's a y, my Y and my X, but not the extruder. Yeah. Hey Dixon, have you ever tried? Uh, have you ever tried any digital steppers? No, I haven't. I I, I didn't know they exist. Yeah, I. Uh, I got an email the other day, and they're they're using them a lot on CNC machines, but the accuracy is just incredible on them. Yeah, they they they're, compensate for skip steps. Yep, and they're uh, NEMA seventeen. They're they're all the same. Uh, they're all the same footprint for every every one of the steppers. So I mean, it's they're, it's got to be it's got to be sort of the same thing. Like down at work, I program. Reliance and, and Eurotherm drives and all of that, and they all have a feedback. It's a high yep. high speed encoder, or or uh, uh, so they must be copying the same thing. I'll bet you my little robot. I think my my little robot. Now that you said that, I'll get my phone here. My little robot has digital has digital. Uh, While well, it's digital servo motors, they're called hybrids. Yeah, and. Maybe uh, you can get an adapter to go in the back of a NEMA 17. And what, what it is, is they basically magnetically stick an encoder to the back of the yep. spindle on the back. And yep. then it reads reads the feedback. So it always knows the position. So if you skip a step, it knows to compensate for that. Now, on a CNC, that's a very important. On a yes. 3D printer, when you've if you've already lost a step and you go back, It'll help. It'll go back, and you won't have a your next layers will be in line, but you still might have a, a right. deviated layer. If you tune in, when I get these machines from China, and that which I never had to look at these, and I never looked to see what the voltage is. But the older machines, I used to have a you got to tune in your drivers, and then they won't skip steps and they won't overheat. Sometimes people tune them and they run them too hot because they're yeah. trying to get the most out of them, but it's not necessary in a 3D printer. And right. these these FL Suns, they got a 32-bit board in them, which you need for a Delta because of the calculations. 
But now uh, th we have them at, at work too. They're called hybrid stepper motors. Mm -hmm. They're NEMA 23s and bigger. And that's what they that's what they did is they and then we, give another, them a we got another man popping in, Mike from Autodrop 3D. Hey, hey, Mike, hey it's been a while. <laughs> How's it yeah. going? It is it is going. Yeah, it's been quite a while. Uh, how is the belt printer coming? In oh, the, the 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 belt printers, both of them are working pretty well. I uh, I like them, and uh, the slicing software seems to be performing excellent because everything's an outside wall. It's weird, like every surface is an outside wall. The only things that you get as a like a top or a bottom surface are things that are like angled at exactly forty five degrees. So. <laughs> Yeah, Greg from 3D Make It popped in for the first time today. He's hey. new here. Hello, and, Greg. Hey, hey, Mike. Mike, how are you doing? Oh. So, Mike, tell us real quick for people that might not know, what do you do? Yeah, so uh, we have a 3D printing platform, which uh, includes web-based CAD, uh, it, you know, parametric 3D modeler, um, and basically you can design or just upload your parts. And if you have a small print farm, you can offer your print farm as a endpoint on the network for people to locally pick up their parts. And it's basically oh. completely um, completely autonomous. So the, the slicing happens automatically um, with profiles that you set up. Uh, it routes to machines based on the material that you have, uh, so that the user has selected. Um, it handles the credit card charging and all that. And literally, if your machine has auto ejection capability, it just keeps on printing stuff from the queue. And if you have regular printers, it prompts you to clear the bed uh, at the end of each job um, and just waits until you've done that before it retrieves more jobs out of the system. So, yeah. So how, how does it communicate with the printer? Do you use Octoprint or do you have your own proprietary software that you... We, uh, we, we actually recently uh, got an Octoprint plugin developed for it. Um, prior to that, and you can still use it, we have our own G code client, which boots in about 20 seconds or 30 seconds on a Pi. Um, and it's it's talking to our thing, but that's a that's a much more lightweight kind of thing. It uh, it runs on the Pi Zero W without any issues and stuff like that. So nice. Yeah, I seen your video you just put out where you had the trap door and the doohickey and was dropping parts. I watched that here recently. Oh man, that was like four years ago or five. Oh, that was, was it? a long time ago. That it was uh, that was the first printer. That was the recommended videos, and that's why I watched it. I'm thinking anyway. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was like the second printer that we had with an ejector. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, so what's your, what's your what's your what's your printer of choice? Um, right now, yeah. Um, so we actually we sell it on our website. We have the uh, the AutoDrop um, ADO one large machine, um, which is available. It's a uh, it's a it's a machine that's made by CME CNC for the base, and then we add our ejector to it. So oh. it's it's a beefy bulletproof machine, basically. Nice. Uh, you ship to, to Europe too? Um, we would have to figure that out because uh, I, I I don't know whether I could do that just because of the the fact that we ship them via freight right now. Um, they're they're big machines. They're based so they they discontinued the Rostock Max line of printers. So we're now using the Boss Delta, and they are they get shipped in a crate. So how big? I mean, how's the build plate? I mean, how big? Um, so for these ones, uh, I think we say that it can print 200 by 200. It might be a little bit bigger than that as far as what the actual printing volume is. But we also uh, we also sell, because uh, we, we, we did go through the effort of patenting the ejection system that we use. Um, so uh, we, we are selling stickers for any vendor who wants to build them themselves and you know sell them at, that are licensed so it's like ten dollars per sticker and you can actually build your own ejectors and sell them with your own printer if you want to we're kind of in doing the opposite of being evil with our patent but trying to be radically like 
embrace anybody who wants to do it instead of being exclusive monopolistic. Would it and, be and those, and those are deltas? Uh, it will, it'll work with a delta, um, or it will work with printers that have lowering bed. So if you if you have like a uh, a machine that has the Z which lowers the plate, um, it it would work fine. We basically slide the bed forward under a stationary blade, and it peels the item up, and they land in like a little landing strip in front of the machine. And we have a normally we put a piece of paper or a piece of uh, slick plastic which lets it just uh, slide off and fall out the front of the machine. Nice. Does it work yeah, on cool. a GTEC one? Um, so it, you would obviously have to make some modifications to your printer to add the linear actuator to slide the bed forward okay. um, and possibly redo how the bed is mounted. But if you have auto leveling, it's pretty easy to add it to your machine. Um, you would just need to, uh, and I, I could give you, I can give you a list of the kind of like the parts you would need um, if you. Uh, if you uh, wanted, but yeah, they're, uh, it, it works pretty well. It's a very reliable system. We actually even taper the raft. We take the raft and we put a taper on it so that it always gets up underneath the, or the blade always goes underneath it. Where's New London at? Uh, so it's in Connecticut, you know? Uh, yeah, we're out of Connecticut. Uh, not a bad place. Well, it is, but it's not it. It's not as bad as uh, some other places. <laughs> yeah, autodrop3d.com. Yeah, I'm yeah. on the website now. Yeah. yeah, we we had a smaller machine that was based on the MP Mini Deltas for a while, but unfortunately, I can't stand behind those with the uh, with the reliability kind of requirements because those require more more attention and regular maintenance than like uh, you know the the CME CNC machines, so we don't we don't sell those anymore. But yeah, and what what's the model number of the one that you're currently selling? That uh, the AD one L, the yeah. large machine. Yeah. yeah, I think we have it up for three grand. I haven't changed the price on that yet to uh, to reflect the uh, the it's it's a slightly more expensive for the machine that we're ordering now. But um, you know, that's uh, that's okay. So if somebody hurry up and order, they can get a good deal before you get the price <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we'll only get a bump up by 200 bucks or something, but not too well, bad. I, I've, I've got to drop off here. I've got to go make some supper for the family. So uh, nice uh, chatting with all of you, and nice I'll see you. if I can get uh, David to come on uh, sometime also. And you awesome. Can meet him. That'd be really cool. Oh. Thank you very much. Very all nice right. meeting you. All right. See you later. Have, Have a good one, Greg. Very cool. Yeah. So what's everybody else working on? Oh, I got yes, my little change. droid. A little droid I did on my live build. I got that going here and it's running. I'm getting Were ready guys, to start painting it. Were you guys having a race yesterday? It looked like everybody was building the same thing. Was that yeah. a race? No, that <laughs> wasn't a race. We we're just trying to get it done. And Sam, the real Sam Prentice was on. He's over in the UK and it was like one o'clock in the morning and our live stream is over three hours long. We wanted it to be a little over an hour at the most. And I was having, I didn't pre check anything, pre fit anything. And Tripod, John from Tripod's Garage, is like, don't cheat, don't build anything, wait till the live stream. <laughs> so once the live stream came, then I didn't know how this went or that went, and I had to figure it out. And I was asking <laughs> Sam, I was asking Tripod, and I had paperwork right in front of me here, the PDF. Eventually, we got it all done, and we'll be doing it again this next Friday at four o'clock. We'll all be hooking up on multi-streaming on multiple channels, uh, painting our droids and talking about the next project and stuff that we're doing, which I don't know what that is yet. Yes. But yeah, you can go over Mr. Bagley's Patreon for $5 a month. You can become a Patreon and get access to all these amazing files. So, And then Wally, uh, Michael, who works for Lucas Arts uh, and uh, Disney was on, and he showed his Wally that he had. And we came to a part cool. where... Where here's a small version here, which is off of from Chaos Cortec off of Fangs.com that I printed. But he had a full size one, and he played music during the stream. And I didn't say anything, and I didn't mute him, and I should have. But I got dinged by YouTube for that being a copyright. Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, they oh my god, that yeah, wasn't on that long. Yeah, it, it was, was on for twenty yeah, seconds. It wasn't on very long at all. Yeah, no, I that's it might happen, and I it did, and there's no way I can. Object? No, there's no way I can appeal it and tell them why and who was on. That that's not one of the options to pick. 
So right now I'm currently trying to edit the video through through YouTube where it'll shut down the audio for 20 seconds. So okay. anyway, mm -hmm. but I I've, I've downloaded the I've downloaded the clip and I sent it to both other guys that were on. So that can be reposted in its entirety. But the one I have on YouTube, I can re-upload it, but then I lose all my 125 or 30 views, and I'd have to start over. So I'm just going to see if I can just edit that out. Through yeah, YouTube. if you can fix it, that's the best way. Red Light, take care, Red Light. Thank you for stopping by. Now, if you ever get a chance, Red Light, you're always welcome to join in and chit-chat or show us what you got going on in your garage. So thank you very much, Red Light. So anyway. I'm a yeah, chatter that, wall, that, wall he was, that wall he was cool as all get up. Yeah, that was awesome. Its eyebrows raised up and down. They could move and it could beep and chirp and talk. And <laughs> so I think the only thing it didn't do was fart on stream. That was about it. So anyway. Well, you don't want that anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it smells like oil. But anyway. <laughs> Actually, that would be a kind of a cool feature. It makes a little noise. Remember the, oh, old yeah. train, remember the old trains years ago? You put a drop of oil in them. Yeah, smoke. Oh, yeah. Them. So in the back of the wall, you got a little puff of smoke that comes out. It's burnt oil. So. Every time I see that stuff, my 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 brain starts going crazy about making smoke come out of it and do this and that. It's like, oh, I wish I had time. I wish I had the time. Yeah, that was the issue because of that song that was playing. Um, when I played my card here, which play, was playing a Star Wars theme, I only did it for a few seconds, so. Let me show you this. I started off the stream with this. But then again, I only played it for a few seconds, but it was that song that played for more than 10. I don't know what the set time frame is, but if you play anything or show video clips during your videos, keep them under 10 seconds. And you, couldn't, you, you, you can't just mark it as uh, fair use? No, because I don't have the rights to it. They give you three different options, that you own the rights or this or that or the other, and there's nowhere where I can... Their algorithm is what picked it up, not a real person. Their algorithm flagged it. And I don't have an option where I can explain who was on and what it was so I can get around it. So I just got to edit that part out if I can. Mm -hmm. If not, it'll stay up. The video will stay up and it'll play, but it'll be demonetized and I can never make a cent off the video ever. So I can leave it as is and just never make a dime off of it. And if it ever makes any money, it goes back to the person that owns that song. So... What a freaking scam. Uh, yeah, it's, it is what it is. So that's, you know, like when people do videos and they go to hotels in Las Vegas and they're playing music and they're in the hotel filming the food that they're eating, there's music in the background. Playing. I don't think they get dinged because how could they? It ain't their fault. It's, it's somebody else is playing. It's not, it's not, it's out of their control. So I'm, I don't know what the limitations are about that. Yeah, but. because you're in control of it. So that could, that could be what that could be. You need to live within their algorithm, Jerry. Yes. <laughs> or you will be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get the <laughs> matrix. Like that, like that big giveaway. We're going to have a, a ton of stuff to oh, give away. On. Now, when are you giving away stuff? Uh, I'm at 2130 or 2140 on subs. When I get to 2,500 subs, I'm having a big giveaway. I've got a lot, about 10 different companies already involved that would like to donate to the stream. So, if uh, you know anybody, Mike, a uh, hint, hint, that might want to donate, well, to the street, you're very welcome to. You can put me down for three rolls of yellow filament. <laughs> All right. And I'll, I'll go back and I edit the streams. I'll, I edit the posts on Facebook and on Twitter, and I list the new company as being sponsors. And what I'm going to do is for everybody that's a sponsor, other than you'll be in the description, I'm going to go to everybody's channel before that giveaway and show them and plug them hard in the stream. <laughs> And then we'll spin the wheel and do a giveaway for that company. <laughs> but I'll, I'll mark it down. Thank you very much. You want one of my little things? Any particular cover, co uh, color? Uh, I don't know. I can make a custom one for you. No, I meant uh, Mike. Oh, uh, yellow. Okay. I, I always do yellow filament. <laughs> Because I thought about maybe I can take a picture of you, make a list of fame out of it, and you sign it in the back of it, and then send it off. Yeah, I don't think anybody would want to lift the pain to me, but yeah. I don't know. We'll talk about it. 
Uh, I hear the ding ding truck out front. When I was a little kid, they called the ice cream man the, the ding ding truck, and everybody got money from their parents and went chasing him down the street. The the ice cream trucks in my area, it's it's weird. They actually have hot food on them sometimes. So, like, if you run outside, you can get, like, a plate of pasta, macaroni and cheese, like, with the breadcrumbs on top, baked. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird thing, or something with lots of gravy on it. Obviously, it's like, you know, they prepare it, and then they just put it on the truck before they go out, but it's a, it's a weird thing. Is it a full-size lunch truck on job sites? I call them roach coaches, or is it smaller, smaller van? No, no, this is like the ice cream truck with the annoying music and all that, you know? <laughs> but they just happen to have, like, one hot dish when they, when they oh. go through. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, ice cream can't... truck right now in Las Vegas. Yeah, they go year round. Oh wow! Yeah, and then, I, I and then there's a man that rides around on a bicycle. Well, actually, he used to be on a bicycle. Now he's on something else. His electronic. I forget what he's driving, and uh, he sells uh, what do you call the Mexican corn, where they slather it in butter, mayonnaise, and uh, garlic. Uh, Chili powder and Parmesan cheese. What's it called, Dave? Uh, con carne, I think. Yeah, they're really good. They're like a buck a piece, and he has other things on the, that they sell. They peddle them around the neighborhood a lot too. It's really good. Hmm. Oh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, <clears throat> it's like maize, and then there's ground beef inside and some other stuff. Uh, Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, what was it called? Tamale. Oh yeah, I like tamales. Oh, I I miss them over here. Tamales we can't good. get them really. Yeah, tamales yeah, are basically they're they're basically like Mexican galunkies. What? Uh, the the galunkies. It's like a stuffed cabbage with rice and beef in it. Kind of similar. It's a Polish thing. It's a weird <laughs> Polish thing. Yeah, the giveaway stream will probably be a month or two off because I'm slowly climbing. I'm not climbing as fast as I would like to get to 2,500. But once I get to 2,400, I'm going to do a video talking about it. I'm going to mention all the companies in the video about the, the giveaway. And then once I have the giveaway, once again, I'll show all the companies. I'll show like two companies, go to their websites, talk about them. And then I'll do a giveaway. And then I'll show two more on screen, talk about them, and then do a giveaway. That way everybody gets plugged really hard. And, uh, is this U.S. only or worldwide, Mike? Oh, that's, uh, I think that's going to be U.S. only. Unless, you know, I mean, I could just PayPal you and uh, you could do whatever you want. Because <laughs> that makes it easier for me. I don't have to go mess around with shipping or nothing. <laughs> okay. And that'll be through Print and Solid? Or who do you uh, go through? It, it, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's yellow. I, yeah, pretty solid is who they went through last time on DB3D, and I guess uh, I, I don't know whether there's somebody else who I did this with, but yeah. Okay. So yellow's not really popular, huh? What? I, it it kind of matches our color scheme. We have the yellow <laughs> accents on everything. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got, I think, one or two yellows, and then one of them was a different color, and I think the droid I printed in your yellow... Oh, sure. yeah, you won last time. <laughs> yeah, got like three rolls. That was so awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, two of them were yellow, I think, and one was a different shade. But one of the yellows, let me grab the big droid body. Let's see. Here's is, the this big the, uh, is this the Jesse stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it printed really nice. It's a real nice color. Really bright yellow. Came out great. How much do you have left? I mean, that looks like probably at least a quarter of a spool. And I've done the two legs. Let me see. Let me make my. Let me change my camera here. Yeah, I've got this here. Then I've got. Let's see, two of the giant legs for the droid. These are at one hundred seventy-five percent. But yeah, it prints really nice. Printed really nice. I printed these on the CR ten. I've got a mirror in one of them that I print ABS with an enclosure. And I don't remember how much I have left. I'd have to, I got part of a spool over there, but I doubt there can't be much left. So, you know, roll doesn't go as far as you think when you're printing big things. 
Yeah, I, I keep on looking for uh, places that are selling like 10 kilogram spools because if you're running continuously, like if you're using the belt printers or if you're using machines that have auto ejectors on them, having bigger spools makes your life significantly easier. Yeah, on a film, a runout sensor would help on a big spool eventually, but on a little printer, it'd run out too fast. Mm -hmm. so. Hey, Dixon. Yeah. You haven't been on the stream for a while, but I got a great little story for you. You know how when you're printing things in, in uh, 3D printing, you have to have product liability because if I make something and some little kid chokes on it or, you know, somebody trips over it or whatever, you got to yep. have product liability. So you saw all those, um, you saw all those parts I was making for my reloaders. Yep. Yep. So, okay. So I have product liability for uh, uh, just general product liability, which is really reasonable. It's like 300 bucks a year. So to go with anything that is 2A associated, they wanted 14,000 a year. <laughs> 300 a year to me is ridiculous, but yeah, if you're making money, 14,000 a year. Yeah, to go to so, so I'm sitting on a whole bunch of these because I just I'd have to sell, I'd have to sell, uh, I'd have to sell, you know, 300 of them just to make my first buck. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I don't bother with all that foolishness. Well, I mean, a kid can. I own a restaurant. Yeah, so I don't, yeah. So I don't I, want the exposure. I, right. you know, they're gonna go. They're gonna go for the deepest pockets, and I. That's why. I that's why you gotta have. That's why you get the LLC, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, the LLC would provide some level of protection to your personal assets and assets that are in other businesses. Yeah. Uh, I I I have an LLC. Yeah. Separate that's one. The printer there. Yes. Uh, why, why, are you, why are you so worried about it? Uh, because having LLC, crazy. they're going to go for the deepest pockets. There is association with anything with me and anything I do. So they're going to go for the deepest pockets. So it doesn't Dave. matter if it's, if it's outside. They can work their way back to it. Dave, I mean, owning on. a restaurant, how often do you have people try to pull stuff at your restaurant, whether the food or they slipped or whatever? Is that pretty frequent or rare? Um, probably three or four times a year. Okay, that's not bad then. Yeah. And you, is, it, is it from an accident or from something else usually? Well, I, I, I installed uh, – I've Camera. got 30, 30 cameras. Okay. You know, I uh, – we had a uh, yeah. I don't even want to discuss it because we've paid out. We paid out a lot of money in uh, in lawsuits that just just stupid, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I've, I've been places before where they're mopping the floor and they put down a sign. And they go, "Well, be careful, sir." And I said, "Well, I can't slip, and you can buy me a new house." And that's usually what I say as a joke, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I don't understand about the American culture. Uh, you know, they're so money orientated and also where's self-responsibility? I mean, you look where you walk. I mean, you're not blind. I mean, yeah, it's you know, blind it's person nice if yeah. people were yeah. like that. You know? In Las Vegas, there's two kinds of commercials. There's car yeah. commercials and there's lawyer commercials. That's all you got on TV. Oh, yeah. 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 And they're ambulance chasers. They're, yeah. they're not, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, it's Yep. People, people, yeah, I won't get, I won't even say it. Yeah. Yep. You don't want to get political. Anyway, let's, let's get back on the hobby. I'm taking it off yeah. track. Yeah. So. All right, guys. I got to go, Jerry. All right. Well, thank you very much for stopping in. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Have a good one, Matt, Dave, Mike. Take see care. you later. Thank you. Peace Peace <clears throat> then there was four. So I can, I can talk about it now that I've filed all the paperwork for it, but um, I've been working on a, uh, a, a filament project, and it's kind of interesting. Um, it basically, uh, the filament, you're able to print um, two colored objects without any physical modifications to your printer. Um, 
you could print two color objects with only um, some G code stuff to, to change the color and there's no add ons or anything that you have to do to your printer. It's purely software and the material. So you got to pay two colors into a nozzle. So you'd have to change your, your, your hot end. No, no single, single material and um, single nozzle and no so hardware changes to the printer. So it is cool. it based on heat then? Uh, yeah, it, it it's based on heat and um, and speed. So yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. I uh, I've been playing with it for a couple of months, trying to figure out how to make it work. And uh, I think I got a a formula that is working enough now, and I've been able to basically you know change it from one color to another and stuff like this at the temperatures that I need. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. What colors, what colors are available? Um, so there's there's a whole bunch of different colors. Um, you know, uh, there's red, orange, yellow, blue, black. Uh, you know, yeah. pretty standard kind of stuff. Are you saying that you heat up the particular type of PLA and it changes color? So the yeah the the idea is is that the material. The material, it, if you print it at one temperature, it comes out one color. If you print it at another temperature, it comes out another color. That's interesting. Sure, just like standard thermal conductivity with anything that you touch with a with a thermal adaptive. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's been something I've been working on. I finally filed all the paperwork for for some of the uh, the stuff on that because you know obviously don't want to just like necessarily. Um, just go crazy with it, but it's uh, it's definitely interesting, and I'm I'm hoping that it goes someplace. Have you done any test prints or experimented with the process? So, so I I haven't done any printing with it yet, but I've done like compounding of the material and then altering the temperatures and getting the different colors out of it and all that. So it is it is it is functional from the material standpoint, and it does stick to itself when you heat it. So. I don't see anticipate any issues printing it. I know that there's some uh, there's some places that use the same kind of plastic for um, for printing without the additives. So, well, I know how you can take any color and go from that color to black, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would turn. That would definitely you can you can toast things. Yeah, that works. What uh, what is the material uh, made of? Is it uh, PLA? Or is uh, it, uh, I, I, I don't want to necessarily get into that just yet, but okay. Um, okay. yeah, there's there's going to be there's going to be information about it once I get the the first batch of it kind of extruded and sent out to some testers. So, cool. nice, nice. Sign me up. Uh, I have a question. Uh, would it be possible to do actually more than two colors in the future, uh, like? Let's say all the colors of the rainbow. Would that be uh, possible? There's 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 significant complications to that. Like you can get portions of it, but okay. um, there's there's some material science questions that would need to be addressed to make that happen. And the good thing is, is that the way the way we've worded things, um, we capture that. But it's just a it's a it's a matter of how. Uh, it's a matter of getting those materials and identifying those materials, stuff like that. It's it's weird sciencey kind of stuff that you have to. Yeah. And we'll stuff. Some stuff is super expensive. Some stuff is not. But it, it just uh, it depends. Like, does it change temperature every ten degrees or? Uh, there's 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 a, a whole variety of different compounds that could be used. So. You know that that's obviously something we can tune in the future. Uh, the stuff we're doing is just the binary one or the other right now, not any gradation yeah. or stuff. 3D chameleon is the only thing currently out there that I'm actually possibly interested in at some point in the future. Oh, those very, things are pretty sweet. Yeah, it goes right on the extruder and has four different colors. There's a million little parts and stuff, but yeah, I've been watching some videos on that. But that's that's interesting. Well, he don't switches it. And you don't actually need to install extra like control software because it just uses toggle switches on the side where it bumps yeah. the head, and it's yeah. it's an excellent system. Yeah, and the purge block idea wastes a lot of filament. I mean, I I hate the idea of a big old giant purge block. 
you want to make a tiny little part, you got a purge block. It looks like a building sitting behind it. Yeah, you're still going to have to have a purge block for pretty much if you're going to be switching your color, just because yeah. whatever's in the nozzle, you got to kind of clean that out. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's a big part and you can get rid of it in an infill and then come back to the outside perimeter. Yeah, yeah, if you can, you can use it up for your infill. If you can design it to work that way, but I don't know. I'm not a uh, rocket scientist. That's a software thing. I think the Prusa Slicer right now is the best for your multicolored stuff, right? Never tried it. Yeah, I've seen this Prusa. That's like a seven interchangeable colored ones, right? Yeah, but the, like the, the software of... that they have, the software that they have, you could basically use your own macros to do the switching. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy to adapt it to your own weird thing, whether you have like a rotary microscope style head or other stuff. It, not just their color changing system or a palette. I know Liam's using uh, just Kira with his IDEX. Oh, the, the, the two heads, yeah. You know, this would be interesting the two colored ones. If you do one, if it goes from white to black, mm -hmm. then get another filament of yours. What does like red and blue, and a third one? What does uh, basically it's, the basic it's colors? You know? it, it would be difficult to go from red to blue, but it would be able to go from like purple to pink, right? You could do that because you're those are colors that you can mix yeah. for a third color, yeah. but. My idea was more like a 2D printer that it can change uh, the temperature and change the color. Then uh, you have multiple, like let's say the GTEC A30M or T take, and then you have all your basic colors and then you'll be able to do any colors what you can produce, you know what I mean? Like yeah, there's, then there, you can make a some... perfect lithophin picture. That's there's there's some places like that that do that. They have uh they have these these systems that clip on right above the nozzle, where it has um it has basically these retracting kind of like uh, pincers or whatever. Basically, it, they're they're pads which have a uh, an ink in them, oh. and you can you can selectively turn them on or off. But that's a lot of hardware modifications. Yeah, I've seen one of those. I've seen uh, multiple ones that had like 12 colors on top and it was like a little machine pulling the pan out and then putting the other pan in and then it would color the white filament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that. It's, uh, it's, a lot more, it's a lot more complicated and you have more of a chance of clogging your nozzle because you're applying it to the outside of the filament, which is also what's going to get toasted by the... Uh, the the nozzle as it goes through. Yeah, I have no experience with that, so I'm just looking at different options because I want to make a true colored lithophane, not bang a paper behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. Make it colorful. Well, they have that thing where you can, they have this stuff where you can float like the, uh, they, they float the ink on top of water. And then you take the object and you dip it into the water and it forms to the object. Yeah, but that's not really accurate because I have to be really accurate because uh, if it doesn't match up with the picture, the black and white picture, then the color red might be moved a little bit further when it's supposed to be on this spot. You know what I mean? That's well, the problem with the water when one. See, when I seen that process, Mike, I, when I first seen that, I said, how could that be real? that have what looks like a uh, transfer or a decal or something in like oil on the, the water or the liquid. And they put a gas tank in it or a fender or a rim and it's perfectly covered. It's like, it looks like a wrap. But they, that's, they've been doing it for years like that. But there was recently, there was probably about five years ago. I remember seeing the Hackaday article. They had written software specifically to do that, but do it to an arbitrary 3D object with a surface like texture on it. So it's kind of a interesting thing. We have another man stopping in. We've got Kenny Briggs. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? Hey, hey. Thank you. 
Up oh, there's a cat. Is that a cat? What are you up to? Oh, there's a kitty cat. Is your mic turned on, Kenny? Yes, person. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> All right. Good. Is my mic working? Yep, we yep. can hear you fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. How's, How's your hair? Your... Uh, uh, your... Kenny? I'm working on garbage cans for my diorama. Yep. Uh, is that a dumpster? Yeah, I'm working on a on a dumpster. These are covers. Oh yeah. What's that? Very nice. Now I'm just reading 3D print newbie uh, Milan's uh, comment. So what are you up to, Kenny? Anything else? You're just kicking back at home, not working today? No, I'm just sitting here watching my uh, printer print some of the stuff out that I'm working on. Have you got your wife interested in 3D printing yet? You got your next printer on the way? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> well, yeah, if you have a if you don't have a joint account, you can just order and say, hey, look, such and such just sent me this. <laughs> You want me to try it out? So, Kenny, anybody in chat that might know who you are, who's, who are you? Who's Kenny Briggs? What do you do? Who, me? I'm a bum, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. But <laughs> yeah. But apparently, you're tasty because the cat seems to be going to town there. Yeah. Catnap. Well, I'm retired, and uh, I'm retired, a law enforcement officer, and after uh, 36 years and seven months, and oh yeah, we just got done eating steak. Oh, okay. And uh, 18 years uh, EMS, uh, I pushed an ambulance around. I own, my wife and I own two businesses, uh, uh, Chippewa Valley Lock and Key and Groundview Metal Detector Sales and Rental. And I'm also an author. I authored a treasure hunting book. Awesome. Ooh. Well, thank you for your service. You ever have to use the metal detectors to find somebody's lost key? Oh, yeah. Lots of times. Yep. And what branded lock did you say that people should have at home that's probably the best and the hardest to pick? What brand was it? The uh, better get Schlag. Schlag? Oh, yeah. Keys and rings. Things like that. Oh. What about uh, scuba diving in a lake with a metal detector? Is that feasibly possible? What's that, Jerry? Can you scuba dive with a metal detector and go yep. in a lake or anything? And Okay. Yep. I've got one metal detector that will go down 10 feet in the water, and I've got another metal detector that will go down 100 feet. Well, I don't mean being on the boat holding it above the water. I mean diving with it going to the bottom. As long as it's 100 feet or, or less. Okay. How would you detect the sound? I mean, does it or a light comes up? For some reason, I'm getting doubled. Oh, you might have to close out the YouTube video. If you have the YouTube open, yeah. it'll give you no audio. Yep. Hold yeah. on a second. I'm going to shut that off. Okay. So, yeah, that I, better? Think, I think you, you were asking whether or not, like, the, the, the metal detectors vibrate or can indicate with a light. Yeah. It uh, vibrates. It uh, and it comes in on your ear like a headphone, <clears throat> and it water? makes a tone. Different What's tones, that? different types of metal. Yeah, different tones like gold, that comes in a low tone. Silver comes in in a high tone. So. Hmm. And How junk comes gold? in. A, what's that? How about white gold? 
same thing. It'll come in low. How about Bitcoin? What does it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, you take a silver coin and a regular coin and drop it on the counter, it'll sound different. Mm -hmm. You can tell the difference what it is. Yeah, my neighbor used to live across the street just to be funny. Years ago, he took a silver dollar and he epoxied it to his garage floor just so and throughout the years people come over, so many people try to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I've watched some of those things with the uh, the YouTube channels where they have the magnetic fish, fishing where they tie a magnet to a, a long like yep, string magnet rope. Fishing. Yep, 150 foot rope. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been trying. I've been thinking about taking that up because I think it might just be fun to do. But yeah, it is. It's dirty. Yeah, I've got a magnet also, but I'm usually too busy in the summertime. I hit uh, road constructions during the construction season, mm -hmm. and that's where I find all my goodies. Are people like losing, uh, uh, like jewelry, or are they losing like tools? What are they losing at those places? Well, back in the 1800s and stuff, they never had any base course or anything. All they did is just cut a path for a sidewalk or a driveway and laid concrete on it. And oh, so this is like on earth. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And then we go in there when the construction crew is done for the day and... In fact, let me see if I can grab a couple of pictures real quick. So this is a lot of like uh, antique coins and, and stuff like that? Yeah, we get them around here from back in the 1800s. Like out east, you're going to get them from the 1600s, 1700s. Imagine if you found a whole bag full of something. Well, the bag would be gone. But if you found, I mean, a shovel full of stuff, that would be so cool. Like oh. overseas, I mean, over in England, I'm sure... Because they've been around for since the beginning of time. I hate to think of all the stuff that's buried. Yeah, well, they find Roman coins in in, in Britain and Europe all the time. Well, see, in Britain and in Europe, that's before BC and all that. Uh, that country was there before the United States was. Yeah. See, and that's why they find the older stuff over there. I don't know if you can. Uh, see if I can. Oh, it's too bright. Uh, I, uh, take it up. Can you see it? Go yeah, up with it's it. too low. Keep going up. Keep going up. Okay. Oh, there we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little to the uh, left or to the right. I'm sorry. Other way. Yeah, there we are. Look at that. Ooh, keys and. Oh, is that a sheriff's badge? Did you find a sheriff's badge? Yep. Wow. That's an old one. That's a, a toy one from uh, an, a retired FBI agent. He started a kid show after he retired from back in the 1920s. And his name is uh, Agent Purvis. And he Purvis. made a yeah, he made a set of six different badges. And if a person has all six of those badges today, It'd be worth over six hundred and fifty dollars worth. Wow! Was this like There's a, been a like couple of cereal different box designs for phone? What's that? Was it like a cereal box game or something? Or no, it like was a, just a kid show, TV show. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? In the nineteen twenties, I had TV. Yeah. Really? Wow. But that's he was an agent back the old, you know, old days. But hmm. uh, yeah, he's he's long gone month now. But was if it, you look him up, he really famous was it? It was like Marvin or Melvin Purvis. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep, yep. I remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's there's so much stuff in the ground that that people have lost over the years. I've got Civil War buttons and. I've got uh, 58 caliber mini balls from the Civil War era. Uh, I found cannonballs here in our town, rings, old coins. 
Yeah, a lot I of found, things. I found a lot of stuff. I've been doing this. You know, March will be 53 years of doing it. Wow. A lot of times it's kind of cool because you could find out where people used to dump their stuff because people used to just dump stuff in, in a hole oh. or at of a oh, the ravine yeah. or whatever it is and yeah, sometimes that's another thing here you could find all the antique like uh medicine bottles and stuff like yeah. that and you'd just be see, walking you'll... along and you'd see a ridge or a an edge of a ravine and they'll just be in the uh the wall of it just because it's a uh, you know they're eroding away there's privy diggers is what they are what are they see, years ago they're called privy diggers Years ago, when they got done with all their bottles and stuff, they take them and throw them in the hole of the outhouse and then bury it with dirt and stuff. And then they'd move the outhouse to another yeah. location. Yep. yep. And that's that's where a lot of people dig to find these old bottles. Some of these bottles are uh, hundreds probably, of dollars. There's a common hundreds, thing. thousands of dollars. Kenny, can, red light wants to know if you're going to sell any of your water detectors. I've got them. That's why I'm a dealer. <laughs> How much might Wait, something this, like that sell for? Is that There's like a fork prices. stick? The fork What's stick that? that tells you where the water is? Ballpark figure, Kenny? A divining <laughs> stick? <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. water detector, The right? ballpark figure of, of uh, the Garrett's water uh, AT Pro, AT Gold. And the AT Max series, which goes down ten feet, is roughly eight hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. wow. And then you you've got other water machines that uh, it's close to a thousand dollars. The ones that go deeper than that. So, are we talking about you're on a boat with a detector uh, in the air, or are we talking nope. about you, you dive with it down? Put in scuba diving gear on and. Into okay. the water you go. I thought most land detectors only went down so many inches, maybe a foot. But the yeah, water depend, detector... depends on the size of the coils that you've got. Okay. See, they make different size coils, anywhere from maybe a four inch coil up to 15, 18 inches. True, but an $800 water detector, why would it go so much deeper? Now, water detector is a little bit different. That is called a pulse induction detector as opposed to a VLF, uh, very low frequency detector. There's different between the two uh, detectors. The pulse induction is a detector. When you're in the water, it throws a pulse down and continues throwing a pulse down until it hits something. Okay. And then the pulse down, going down stops. Like at the location. And then the pulse comes back to uh, your unit. Saying there's an item down there. Okay. And that's what the pulse inductions are. But how is that get different from the regular one? The other VLL, VLL metal detectors, they go down and back, down and back, down and back all the time. Red light, do you need a web address or anything to get a hold of Kenny? If you're interested, we can uh, post it. I, uh, I'm on... Facebook and my website is www.groundviewmetaldetectors.biz. Okay. But yeah, it's a great hobby. It, uh, that's where you, I spend most of my summertime, spring, well, spring, summer, and fall, I'm out playing in the dirt. What's the uh, what's the weirdest thing you found? Well, I'm a locksmith, and would you believe a key that dates back to the 1700s? And would you believe it was found in front of my house when they dug up our street? Wait, did you find what it fit? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big, it's a big long key, and the the uh, round part of it is as big as my thumb. Wow. So it went to something big. Huh. Yeah, if you Probably go into my Facebook belt. page, go into my Facebook page and, and look under photos, I've got tons of photos in there. You can see a lot of the stuff that I've got. Yes, yeah, must be like a really strong door or something. Okay, yeah. here's a link right here if you didn't have it. There you go. 
But, uh, sure. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm making. Uh, I'm doing a diorama, metal detecting diorama, and that's why I've got my 3D printer. I'm making small parts for my diorama with my printer, so I can incorporate go. them. Here's his there side right here. There's his beautiful wife. Yep. Is that your front yard? And that's your water fountain, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the park downtown in Chippewa. Oh, you rent them too. That's a that's yep. a good idea. Yeah. Oh yeah! Look at all the booty. See, and then you can sign up for uh, my my newsletter right there. I put out twice a month. And you have right-handed navigation on the website. Yeah. <laughs> That's all pictures. That left side. Which one should all, I click on? It doesn't matter. You can go down and take a see that uh, website home and all albums. That's all pictures. Was that a guitar pick up there? Where? There? Uh, all the way up the top. If you scroll back up to the top. That right there. What What is That's that? A, I really don't know what it is. I just Let's found it. D-E-S-O -E something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It looks like a pick. Well, I'm not sure. But all those pictures there on the left-hand column, that's all pictures of different things that you can just go down through and pick out. They used they to make them out of like turtle shells, didn't they? The guitar picks. Yeah. You find old guns and stuff, too? Old what? Old guns and stuff, too? Yep. Got a picture trying to load here. It's, come I on. Can uh, restore one of those guns? Don't want to load. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit. There's so much stuff in there that... Oh, well, that's empty. Okay. Well, that's okay. Yep. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh oh. You're on a forbidden site. Did you break his website? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, spoon right there on the left. That's an 1847 New York uh, World's Fair spoon. That I found. Ooh. Now silver holds up pretty well when it's in the ground. Like it doesn't corrode and then flake away nope, like steel. Yep, it doesn't. It looks like the day it was dropped. Just nice and shiny. And that's silver from 1964 back. Anything now from 65 up is all clad. It's all turns dark colored and stuff. When my mom passed away, she left all three of us, my brother and sister, <laughs> And me, a bunch of old coins and stuff they'd collected forever. And my sister divided them up, and I wound up putting them on uh, Craigslist or something, or Facebook Marketplace, and I sold them. I kind of look, I kind of get, I, I figured up the value that was sitting there, and I kicked it up a little bit, not really knowing what I had. And the first yep. person that came out and bought all of it, so it must have been a good deal. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to take the time to try to research every single one and try to figure out what I really had or didn't have. There's my, there's my new book that I'm working on. Go down and again. Go down right there. Down th right so, there. So what have you found that hasn't been metal but has been next to something that was metal? Marbles. Things of glass. Nails are probably the most common, right? Nails. Oh, nails, yeah. But you know what those, you can tell what those are. There's my book that I wrote. And then my other book that I'm in the process of working on. I'm working on that one. And all that stuff there, those two pictures, that's stuff that I found myself. Have you made enough money on your book that it's worth the effort? Yeah. Okay, I just good. got a check the other day again from Amazon. Awesome. Oh, did you use Amazon to actually do your publishing? Yep, KDP. So I, I hear it's pretty reasonable if you have a good idea, right? Yep, it is very. But you're kind of stuck with Amazon at that point. You can't ever go to another place, right? As part of the agreement. No, no. 
no, you just got to stay with them and you got to watch what you're doing when you're doing books and stuff. There's certain publishers out there to stay away from because they'll rake you over the coals and you're going to end up broke. Hmm. They'll take all your money and Hello, Shane. How you doing? Would you like to drop in and hang out with us, Shane? Hi, Shane. We need somebody to spice this up, and I know you're working on a killer printer. We would love to hear about it. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of printer? I'm not sure. Is that for oh. like nickels? Is that what he's talking about? 65 is 40% silver? Nickels. Yeah, 1965 up is all clad. It's copper and silver both or whatever, and zinc, things like that. Well, that's uh, when did when did pennies go to zinc? Pennies went to zinc in uh, 72, 73. They need to do away with pennies. I hate pennies. I always have hated pennies. They're a pain in the ass. You're not going to have to worry about it much longer. You're just going to use your uh, your digital currency. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I rarely <laughs> carry cash. I use my debit card for everything. So I'm waiting for the homeless guy to walk up and ask for a dollar and say, I don't have any cash. He's going to pull out a little scanner and say, well, here, I take, I accept cards. <laughs> you, know, you know, you need to have a smartphone. You can do it with Facebook. You can do it with uh, a whole bunch of different systems now. Old pop can tabs. Yep. But the thing of it is on pop can tabs, rings ring up the same numbering system as uh, those. So if you don't pick those up, you might miss out on a gold ring. Ah, so you, your your detectors are kind of smart. They know what you what's in the ground or can give you an idea. Yeah. Here's what I'm. Uh, let's see which way can I go. Uh, that, you drop out. Uh, you're all, you're all black. Kenny hit the wrong button. It's got a spinning thing there. I don't it's got a black screen. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> We lost you, Kenny. Reboot. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <sighs> what time there. are you guys have it over there? So, Mike, that set, go ahead, Matt. What time you guys have it over there? Here in Vegas, it's five sixteen. It's about eight o'clock for me on the East Coast. Seven o'clock Midwest. Thank you. Nope, Kenny, still nothing. Uh oh. You got a neck problem too, auto prop? Uh yeah, my uh my neck is yeah. I, I, I need to get it cracked every now and then and you know it's uh it's not perfect, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> I unfortunately I sit in an office chair all day, and that is not good for your back. Yep, oh, here we are. You're back. Yeah, it's short, but I guess that's what the style. It looks good. Uh, uh move move it up a little bit. Uh, there we are. Right. Are these the uh, the marine ones or are these the regular ones? Those are all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Are they marine for water, or are they just for land? I got a little bit of everything. The one in the yellow. Let's see if I can get up, up again. Down uh, a little. I'm going a little bit more to the towards the uh, the yellow one. Come on, it's right. Oh, the other way. way. Yeah, there we are. That yellow one. Ah. So that's a that's a marine detector, that yellow one. Yes. Yeah, that the yellow one is a uh, that goes down a hundred feet. 
That's the scuba diving one. Nice. And you rent those also? Yep. So somebody could rent it, see if they liked it, then they could turn around and buy one. Yep, absolutely. But do you ship for rentals or it's only for local pickup? Just for local. Okay. Got to know where to go and pick it up if they don't bring it back. <laughs> is, there yeah. water, is there water close by where they could go diving to try it out? Yep, we have Lake Wissota. But the thing of it is in Wisconsin, there's no water hunting allowed. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources put a stop to uh, water hunting back wow. in November of 2009. Really? Yeah. Why That's disturbing you... the bottom floor of the breeding floor for certain fish. Well, by removing trash, a lot of times, like metal detecting people, they'll they'll clean up trash while they're doing it, which is a good thing. I don't know why they get yep. all pissed off about it. What kind of yeah. rings are those, you know? The one on top is uh, gold, and the one on the bottom is Black Hills gold. Nice. And those ring up as junk. Huh. Hmm. And, oh, I should say aluminum foil. Oh, if, I have, if I wouldn't have picked those up or dug them, just think somebody would have, it would have been laying there or somebody always, else would have found it. Always check. Don't assume nothing is nothing. Right. And the thing of it is also what I do in the summertime, well, you can, in the, uh, let's see. That's all junk that I pick up. Oh, do you do any scrapping also? No. I save all my stuff, all my trash for the whole year that I dig. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, weigh it in. And then I take pictures and I do a video. It's called the Tarp of Trash. I do a video every year. I got an amazing story to tell you. When yeah. they built uh, Bellagio here in Vegas years ago, um, the Mirage Hotel that Steve Wynn owned, they would clean out their moats and everything, you know, where they have the waterfalls and stuff, and people throw in money, make a wish. Mm -hmm. And because he, you're not allowed to obviously get it, they don't clean it out and keep it. They would go and scoop it all out, however they got it out. They took it down to the Bellagio job site when they first started building, and semi-truck after semi-truck would dump all that stuff in big, giant piles. And one of the couple of people that worked on the job site that were there had the seniority and were allowed to would sift through that. And one guy got out over five or six thousand dollars in coins. Some of them were destroyed. Most of them he was able to turn them in. By the time I got hired there, there was like dimes and pennies, and I got quite a bit. It was damaged, but it was basically free money. Yeah. And I heard when they clean out these ponds, they would take them to different places where the family owned or their relatives, and they would dump it and they would sift through it and get the coins out. Yeah. Well, they didn't go and do something like give it to charity or something. No, they then the back then they were, and I don't know what they currently do, but yeah, yeah. you'll see people on the show cops. Sometimes they jump in the pond, homeless people, and they're trying yeah. to scoop up money to go buy whatever and, you yeah. know, get arrested or whatever. Yeah. Just find the guy that's drenched in water. You know, he's walking down the sidewalk, follow a trail. Yeah. So. And that's some of the things I'm going to be uh, making too with my printer is some of the coins uh, with my 3d printer and implementing them in my diorama. That'll be so nice. The, so there'll be brown brown pennies and then I'll have the gray or silver silver quarters, dimes, you know, you know, nickels like that. And I'll just put them in the different areas and have a couple of metal detectors, you know, metal detecting and yeah. You could print out some little chests or like treasure chests. Bill and pull of goodies and give them to certain family members for presents. Yeah. I just found a nice, nice size uh, treasure chest on Thinkiverse. It's got the key on it. Uh -huh. So I'm going to print that out. Sounds cool. So if somebody wants to go buy a nice little whatever, big screen TV, say here, open this up and go cash it in. Yeah. And then I'm, and I'm also can use it for marketing. You know, I can fill it up with a lot of my stuff. Bless That's you. you. I can. Oh, thank you. Fill it up with a lot of my stuff that I found, and then you know have a have a giveaway or whatever you know for marketing purposes. Jerry, I gotta go, man. All right, thank you, Dave. I appreciate you coming yeah, by. Bye, Dave. 
Yeah. Take care, Dave. Have a great weekend. So yeah, I'm, oh. that's one thing I'm having fun with the uh, my 3D printer making stuff for my diorama. Have you and ever used Garrett multi, multi Yes, I own one. Yep. I got it last October, so I didn't have it a full year to really uh, see what it's like. But this summer, well, this spring, I should say, is I'm going to uh, give it the full year. But I love that machine. It's it's light. It's only two and a half pounds. My brother bought a Garrett when I was a teenager. He still has it, doesn't use it. It's green. That's all I can tell you. It's green. The old, yep, the old groundhogs. That could be, yeah. I tried to buy it from him years ago, but he says, no, I'm not going to sell it. They don't make parts for him anymore, so. But that, the uh, Apex that they just come out with, the multi-frequency one, we uh, sell them for, with wireless headphones for four ninety two ninety five. dollars That's yeah, a pretty really good. I got uh, one in the garage in a black bag that probably costs 50 or 60 bucks. I haven't ever used it. It's yeah. a real, real cheapy. Yeah. But it's a good hobby. Pass the time and away and you know, help me through my stress levels for my jobs over the years, you know. If I had a bad mm. call, I'd grab the, come home, grab the detector, and go and forget about life, you know. Yeah, I guess you go to go to parks and things like that if they allow it. and Nobody yep. would bother you, that is. Yeah, we have a large 500-acre park here in Chippewa. Mm -hmm. It's called Irvine Park. And we're down there all the time. And we've got the fairgrounds. This is across the street from the park. And the fairgrounds was built in 1847. So we're still finding old stuff there. They cut out a section of dirt on one of the uh, parking areas there or whatever. And between three of us, my two hunting partners and myself, we took out over a thousand uh coins and two-thirds of them were all 1800 stuff wow okay so yeah mike mike from auto drop i'm thinking printed solid yellow and you just order it and then have it sent to us only probably the best way to handle that three rolls uh sure i, I did the way the way i handled it last time is um i just uh i sent uh What's his name? I think I sent him like 80 bucks or whatever, or 60 bucks or something, and he just ordered it and had it shipped out. So Okay. You'd want uh, to do three, three rolls to one person or three rolls to three people? Well, yeah, I don't think you get free shipping unless you go over a certain amount. So doing three to one person is probably the, uh, the best way to do that. You get the okay. most bang for your buck that way. Okay. So right. hey, something, something that's kind of nice. And I, I've been using these increasingly uh, ever since I got like a, a package of them um, for Christmas. Um, somebody gave me a package of these uh, of these gloves here. Uh huh. Okay, and these gloves are awesome because they are they're they're basically they're cloth gloves, so they're super mm -hmm. comfortable, but they're yep. rubberized and. These ones are actually really nice because they work with touchscreens. I didn't know that that was like, I, I know that they sell special gloves for touchscreens, but these mm -hmm. aren't for like keeping your hands warm. These are for like increasing the amount of grip you have and like, um, you know, just kind of basic protection from stuff. Yep. And I've been using them a lot um, for when I'm like, you know, trying to peel support or stuff off of 3D prints um, because you can actually feel through them. I can actually type with these things on. Oh, cool. um, yeah, I've, I've torn, I've torn up and scratched myself really bad on supports before. And oh yeah, like I, it, I, I, I use those, uh, those little cheap uh, flush cutters from the the Chinese printers. They all come with them. Those little blue handled things. Those things are excellent. But, and then I, um, use, I have some red handled needle nose pliers that are real heavy duty, like for you know working on your car or something. I like, grab. Yeah. And pull. <laughs> I need yeah, more. There's, these, Mike. Those yeah, are good those, for you know what? Those things are excellent. I there's, jab there's myself in the thumb. And <laughs> oh, you don't want a scraper. I, I hate scrapers. That's why I trim I, my nails with those blue cutters versus my regular clippers. They work good. 
the the, the blue ones. Me. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the blue ones, I, I've been amazed with them because there's there's a U.S. company that makes the same exact thing, right? And the mm -hmm. U.S. ones are they they break quicker than the Chinese ones, and I don't understand wow. it. Like, how the heck that happens? Because yeah. they probably ordered them from Taiwan and put a U.S. sticker on it or something. No, I, yep. I, maybe, but I, I don't know. It's the, the Chinese ones. They just they they work really well, and if I, I probably should order a couple hundred of them. <laughs> yep. Uh, Red Light is wondering if you can beat the price of four ninety nine on it, but I think you're set in your prices and you can't budge because no. of your license yeah, that, the dealer. Right. Yeah, we can only go a certain price, and right now it's four ninety two ninety five is the bottom line. Do you buy used detectors if somebody came in and they're hurting for money? Depends on the condition and stuff. Whether I can be able to sell it. Okay. When you went to resell it, that is up to you what you asked, or do you have to base them off what the dealer wants? Nope. Those used ones, I can sell them for what I can get out of them. Okay. And do you ever list those online, or that's just something somebody would have to call and check with you to see if you had something in randomly? They'd have to call me because I very seldom do I have a used unit in stock. I mean, I, I get them in. Well, that one stayed in my office, what, two hours, and it was out the door? Okay. Oh, uh, so you already know people who want to pick these things right. up. And, hey, I got a deal. Yeah, yeah, well, it helps be in the locksmith shop and the metal detecting shop in one place. Mm. So people come in and want keys and stuff, and then they look at all my displays that I've got, and then they start talking and say, well, I got a used unit. Yeah, I'll, okay. Out the door it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, and having yeah, all those goodies to show people probably helps you sell stuff. They walk in and go, "Oh my God, look at what he found! I'm yeah. going to go out and do this tomorrow. I need one." <laughs> look at all that money. <laughs> yeah. Well, have you have you found that with uh, the whole COVID thing going on, and you know, having kind of like a solitary outdoor activity like metal detecting, that you're getting more people into the hobby? Or yes, definitely. It... Yep. Okay. Yeah, a lot more people are doing it because of the you know the limited by themselves mm -hmm. one good thing though is i only live one two three four blocks from the fairgrounds five blocks from the park so i can walk over there oh the fairgrounds have got to be interesting because that's the fairgrounds had probably been there for like 150 years right so you can now find started in 1847 old... yeah that's that's an old place yeah, and see, it's private property. You oh, have to have so, permission. Yeah. And we have exclusive rights to be there because... Oh, do you have like a club that does it or... Well, I started a club and I've since walked away from it. And what happened is somebody came in and did a lot of damage. They dug a lot of holes and didn't cover anything up. Ah. So we as a club, when I was in the when I was the president of the club, we took a truckload of black dirt, grass seed, and water, and we went and repaired all this damage. And we sealed it to where we can go up there anytime we want. You know, a couple of shows on TV I really like to watch. One is Gold Rush, and two would be Bering Sea Gold. Yeah, they go out on the Bering Sea. It's only about ten to twenty-five foot deep. And they have a big giant uh, backhoe, a track hoe, basically, and they're scooping it up and sifting it. And it's really cool uh, getting some of the nuggets they get out of that. A lot of it's fine, but a lot of it's nuggets. Really, yeah. around. is that is yeah, that around here? Gold? You get you get flake gold around here, oh, brought in by the glaciers from thousands of years ago. Bering mm. Sea Gold. It's on a uh, uh, watch on what's it on Sling. Yeah, Bering Sea Gold, and they're probably on YouTube also. And then Gold Rush is another one that's really good. I yep. said two uncles that have passed on that were open pit miners, like Gold Rush, but on a small scale with two guys. And they were up in some part of Nevada, Light in Nevada, I think it was. And they've done a lot well, of open pit mining. It's really interesting because you can actually, uh, you know, you can you can go to the government and you can actually stake a claim and pay your stuff. And 
be able to use federal land to do that kind of thing for extracting yeah. mineral resources. Yep. But you can't have a permanent structure. If you have a uh, log cabin or anything you're living in, it's got to be sitting on the dirt. And if you want to cut down a pine tree for Christmas, you can't. But you can dig for gold and you know turn it over, but you can't have any structures that are on a concrete foundation. You can't cut down trees. Mm -hmm. That's why they feel like here in Nevada. That's why many people have trailers. Yeah. Yeah. Or home yep. Vehicles. Yeah. But it's that's kind of a cool thing, you know. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I'm like I said, mine's in March it'll be fifty three years of doing it. And then somewhere in Colorado, I don't remember the name of the show, somebody in chat will probably know it or you guys, where people would go up on the side of these different mountains and they'd find all kinds of gems and stones and it's really dangerous and people get hurt yeah. a lot, but yeah. they're sifting through rocks and chipping away. The rock hunters. Yeah, they're getting some really cool gems. And then down in Arizona and that way they got the uh meteorite people yeah years ago i heard he found a meteorite it's worth like a million bucks or something but i don't know but they come to yeah. earth all the time and hit yeah oh, there's I've a got really a machine that will pick up meteorites i'd there, love there, to have there, one come right through my roof the size of a bowling ball that me and my wife can go buy a nice house and vehicles there you go I, yeah. i'd much rather have something from spacex <laughs> come through my roof that way i can send a bill to elon musk yeah yeah, Jerry, you could buy a new extension on your house, and you could buy 600 different printers and have them yep. going. <laughs> so, what was that yeah, thing? Uh, they, uh, oh, they, I hear they, Betty in the back. <laughs> they had somebody yeah. go and take a really big meteorite, and they machined uh, like a set of, of, uh, of guns out of them. I remember they did that. They were like selling the guns for like two or three million. Mm-hmm. Yeah, within the next week or two, I'll be ordering my Prusa Mini. I'll be that everybody donated to, and I was able. I'm able to afford. I'll get to. I'll get that ordered, and then the next thing that I'll probably be doing a fundraiser for will be buying a Delta style printer since I've never had a Delta style. Oh, the Deltas are excellent. Um, oh yeah, you can tell me. I wrote down the one you were talking about. You were talking about. Uh, I wrote where to write that. Oh yeah, these little guys. Ah, so here. I uh, this this obviously is one which uh, you know it's not exactly in use at the moment, um, but uh, you can see you can see our ejector hardware that's installed in there. But um, these ones, when they come from the factory, they're they're like they're like a hundred bucks from mono price, and they have three it? push buttons underneath the bed, so it has an auto leveler built in, and. You know those those work pretty well. Um, the only thing that you would might want to replace on it is the hot end assembly after it clogs, because you know eventually your hot end they're not very good hot ends. Mm -hmm. So you can replace that with an E three D or something. They have the three D printed parts, but it's uh everything on it's metal. So like the sides, these are aluminum extrusions. They have um they have the uh the the metal rods for the uh for the accesses, and then like the effector plate in here, that is all, uh, that's all uh, sheet metal. All so right. they're, they're pretty solid machines, but they're tiny. You can print what, six, eight inches tall maybe? Um, I, I would say you could print uh, maybe about, maybe about, uh, I'd have to look it up. Uh, okay. it, yeah, they're. Okay. You don't need to look it up. I can check online. Yeah, they're they're a pretty decent little machine, and if you if you like that, then you can go to get the uh, the bigger ones. Um, the FL Q5 Delta, and that was a mono price mini, right? Well, yeah, that one's only like a hundred bucks. The other ones you're going to be spending two, three, four, five, four hundred bucks on, or you could go really, yeah. really nice and get a Simi CNC. Uh, those ones are like I think I think the the ones that we're using now they're like seventeen hundred bucks if you get the base model or the the normal model that they sell on their website. Yeah, but count, uh, customs, like, here in Vegas. count customs here in Vegas. Uh, Walter, he's been on my channel a while back. He's one of my friends here in town. He does all their uh, polishing and stuff for the show Count Customs on Discovery, and they have one in their shop. I, it's red. I can't Traxxas. I think it's called. A Trax or Traxxas, and they have one that's like 15 foot tall. They've mm. got a really big one, and I guess they got some upcoming episodes where they printed out some really large objects that are going to be on the Discovery Channel on their show. Yeah, oh, you yeah. can you can build an exceptionally large Delta 
very easily. Um, mm -hmm. If you get big stepper motors and big um, uh, big motor controllers, you can just use a standard ramp board and you can drive them. Um, mm -hmm. And they, a lot of them they'll use, like for the really big ones, they'll use bicycle chain. Um, just really long bicycle chain for the uh, the axes. The yeah. CBC and C guys, they had, uh, I don't know if you've gone to any of the maker fairs, but they had like the, uh, the 15 foot tall machine printing out like gigantic rockets during the event. Mm -hmm. They had a vacuum cleaner which sucked up pellets into yeah. hot end. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that in videos. Well, now having the belt printer, you can do the rocket in two pieces. You can make it as long as you want in two pieces, basically, and glue it together. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anybody do a gigantic belt printer yet, but I imagine that it wouldn't be as difficult as you would think because, really, you just need to keep the uh, – you need to have some tension on the belt, um, and you need a belt material that you can, like, stitch together. Um, if, to make if the, if the belt is really tight, does it flex up when things start to come off the print? It lifts up in the middle a little bit, or does it not? So if if, if the, the belts that I've been using stuff hasn't been lifting, um, okay. unless unless the belt is loose, right? If the belt is loose, then you you kind of get the the pull up on the sides. But if yeah. you have it taut, um, you don't get any of that that pull up. Um, okay. Uh, that 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 pulling up that's uh that's something that you got to worry about anytime you have a thin build surface because it sucks um that was what we that was the reason that we stopped doing the trapdoor printers because they uh the 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 warping would you know if you if you're doing an object that's this tall that's fine but as soon as you start doing this it starts wobbling mm. Yeah, when I watched your video, actually, I was kind of shocked. I'm thinking, no, this can't be new. And he said it wasn't for like four years old. But I'm thinking, no, I think he's way beyond this point. But I watched it and I enjoyed it. But Yeah, the nice thing about that is that the prior art is out there. So if somebody comes up with a, uh, a good way of actually doing it or a, if they find a good paper to use that's rigid enough to do it, um, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the intellectual property... Um, is out there, um, and it's not, and, and, and the proven prior art is also there. So yeah, that's where you know, you're not running the trouble. printer. The printer paper kicked out with a job mm -hmm. on it. You print it on the paper, and then it dropped into the trap door. <laughs> it was, you know, what that that having the job details on the paper is the the thing I miss most about that because it was perfect. You you knew whose print it was. All right, guys. I say good night. Uh, All right. See cool. you next time. Yeah, All right, gonna, Matt. Thank you. I'm going to end this here in a minute. You take care, Matt. I'll talk to you soon. Take thank care, you. Matt. See you. Right. Yeah, this has been going for what, about three hours? Yeah, three hours, 12 minutes. I usually go four, but we're slowing way down, so I think I'm going to end it. But okay. but yeah, uh, I'll do another post, and I'll put you in the post on Facebook and my Facebook page as being a sponsor of the giveaway whenever I have it. So hopefully it'll happen within the next two months. Okay. And, uh, yeah, just let I'll, me know. I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Kenny Briggs, thank you very much for coming on and talking about all that you do. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Jerry, so, for having me. Yeah, uh, next Friday at 4 o'clock, uh, we'll be going live again on the Droid Build. Okay. Uh, we'll have another episode, and I'm not sure what I'm doing during the week before then, but I'm always around somewhere, and you guys are always popping in and out everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I, I, saw, I saw you had a that that guy on who was the... Uh, the, the the robot guy for the Star Wars stuff. Are you planning Sam? on doing any more like interview sessions like that? Like, do you have some people lined up for anything yet? Uh, just regular old people or regular old makers like you or Kenny. Uh, I haven't got anybody lined up for this next week, but um, yeah, I do that. I, I still do that. And we're doing the droid build series and I do hang out. So I'm always doing something. So cool. Anyway. And now with my machine is up and running good. I had one problem this week, though. Uh -oh. that the filament was coming out where the nozzle screws in. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, and I caught it at the right time. So I took it all apart, tore it all apart, took the, the heating element off of it, cleaned everything, put it back, put a new uh, 0 0.4 yeah. nozzle on it. Mm -hmm. It's been running great. Yeah, four millimeter nozzle. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you have it loose, it'll leak right there. You have a leak. 
Yep. It, it, it sucks if you get a leak and then it gets, uh, you get you dribble out a little plastic on something and then you accidentally catch your whole 3D print and then you have a 3D print which kind of like oozes up around everything. That yeah. is the absolute worst thing ever. Yeah, if you ever get a big blob like that, just heat up your hot end, get a glove, get a spatula, and you yep. can dig it off and then get a razor knife and carefully dig it off. Just keep away from the heater and the thermistor yep. wires and don't cut it. You can clean up the nozzle with a blob. Yeah, I was uh, watching yeah. it at the time so i caught it at the right time you know yeah. i i shut everything down and i took everything apart and cleaned it and put a new nozzle in and like i said it's been working great now yeah I, I, ever i don't know when i do a lot of printing on one printer every three or four months if i ever start having this problem and that problem with the nozzle usually rather than cleaning it i usually just unscrew it throw it away and put another one in yeah, I, I just got a new order of nozzles in yesterday so Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for coming hey. in. I'll be in touch, and I'm going to go ahead and bleep you out. All right. So, take care, Jerry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So there we go. Three hours and 15 minutes, everybody. I appreciate everybody stopping by. And come back on Friday when Tripod, uh, Sam the Real Prentice. Nope. Sam Prentice. No, nope. the real Sam Prentice. Yeah, I, I don't know why I get that confused. It really irritates me when I say his name backwards. But, yeah, we'll be back uh, next Friday at 4 o'clock. I will probably do another Hangout before then. I may even have a special guest on. So please like, subscribe, share this. If you want some cool discounts, they're down below in the description. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and happy printing. And let me figure out where I go over here to stop my stream. It's right here somewhere. Where is that? Oh, there it is. Take care, everybody.